Tube, what up? What's going on? Let's get Just in case they needed to know. Yeah, it's being recorded. What up, what up, what up? Earners, what up? Assets over liabilities, you know the vibe. All day, every day. You know how we rock, bro. The team here, what's up? What's up, y'all? Greatest show on earth. That's a big fact. Market Mondays. Running up them charts in every country near you. No matter nothing, where you're from. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Nothing we're, like it. We're blessed to be back. We're blessed to be in front of y'all. Hopefully everybody had a, an amazing Monday. Yeah. I know the market was pretty good last week for y'all. So I, everybody should be coming in here enthusiastic. We got one more shot at this thing. Shout out to my man, Kenny Burns. Kenny B. On the show today. Got to talk about XLY. Yeah, yeah. Always, uh, you know what's you know, in there. My favorite. BYL favorite. <laughs> Shout out to all the Amazon bullies out there. BYL favorite. Oh, yeah. Tesla getting itself together. Let's get it all in perspective. Let's see if the bro's here. There you go. He here. The master investor, Ian Dunlap. What's going on? <laughs> Shout out to everybody out there that's getting to a bag, man. Shout out to everybody in the Bronx. I was in the Bronx this weekend for my son's tournament. Um, and a bunch of people just, you know, with supporters came up to me like, yo, what's up? What's going on, man? Appreciate what you're doing. So, yeah, you know, the Bronx, that's. Yeah, bro, what up? Yeah, shout, shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. Best time. Shout out to everybody we in popped Brooklyn. Popped up there over there on Wednesday with our brother, Juvenal. MG was out there. A lot of places. <laughs> Derek, a lot of... <laughs> Derek Falcon was out there. Nacho Banger was out there. Not your average podcast. Yeah, if, yeah, you're yeah. Looking, if you're looking for EYL, it's not hard to find us, man. We in a lot of places that. <laughs> You wouldn't be in. <laughs> yeah, you want to feel safe in. You so feel bad. right at home. Shout out to Dykeman. Uh, shout out to Dykeman. Shout out to Best Star. Shout out to the Browns. There was like 1,900 people at that game. Oh, it was oh. It looked like above the rim three. I'm like, boy, it was packed. Shout, shout, shout out to Miguel. Shout out to Kev. Shout out to Ken. Uh, shout out to Miss Basketball. Shout out to Chris Gotti. Yeah. The whole Dykeman family, man. It was, a, it was. It was, I wouldn't miss that for the world, man. It was an honor to, to be able to be there for opening day, first game in two years. Yeah. Packed to capacity. It's crazy. Playing on a half of a court. I couldn't even see half the game. Yeah, <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Big Face Gary. We had a spirited conversation. Shout out to Big Face <laughs> Gary. You know him? You know him, Ian? No, I'm not familiar. He was in the Rock. He was down with Rockefeller back in the days. Okay. Yeah. What well, was he there when Kenny was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was there. Okay. And he was all, he was around and yeah, um, he, was he, it A&R? He's A&R. He A&R, one of my favorite songs that they ever made, which was uh, Filling in the Air. He was telling Oh, he, he a legend just off that one. He don't need nothing else. Yeah. So we was uh, we was having a debate about basketball with him. So shout out to Big Faith Gary, man. <laughs> New York City. Shout out to New York City. Shout out to New York City. Let's, let's just say this right now. Thursday, this Thursday, yeah. we are having a networking party. That's yeah. what we're calling it. It's not a seminar. Nope. We're not, don't come with no pads. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, enjoy ourselves. We're gonna have a good time. But we're like, if we're gonna hang out, we might as well party with a purpose, yeah. Um, and make so it make sense, make it make sense. Free, free. We're going uptown, Jimmy Spot, yeah. Um, seven o'clock on Thursday. If you're in New York City, everybody's been saying, When you want to do something for New York City, hello, this is it, hello, this is it right here. So, um, yeah, we we are uh, we in there Thursday. At seven o'clock, is it okay if I say who's coming? No, <laughs> show up. <laughs> hey, yo, while we're talking about the Bronx, shout out to, shout out to our, our boys from Philly, shout out to Brandon, shout out to uh, Jalil. We're uh, we doing something really special with those two guys. And shout out to my, my students, man. I ran into some more students in and out in the Bronx. Shout out to Shaq. What up, Shaq? Uh, Mark. It's amazing. My man Dwayne just hit me today. He was like, yo, what's up with that thing y'all doing? I was like, everything top secret. Yeah. So shout yeah, is it 21 and over? Because people have been asking me. It yes. Be you may be able to sneak one or two in. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. Know, you know how that go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ian Dunlap, you will be in the building, right? You said you couldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to me, I may be there. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, we we coming, we coming, man. So uh, you got a RSVP. So the link is in the, the bio on Instagram. My Instagram, Earn Your Leisure Instagram, Choice Instagram. Yeah. If you don't RSVP, can't make it. Are so, we bringing merch? Somebody just asked if we bring yeah, merch. Yeah, we got some merch. We, we got, got some, merch. We'll bring some merch. 
Yeah. So, um, all right, let's let's get into this. Um, Troy. Yeah, yeah. Let me shout out to everybody over at Ally, our good folks and you know, good friends over there. Uh, so this episode of Market Money is brought to you by Ally Financial. Ally is an option if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally Financial is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service and innovative financial solutions. They are relentlessly focused on doing it right and being a trusted financial service provider to both customers and communities. Get with Ally to make the most of your money so you can save, invest, and spend the things that matter to you. Shout out to the folks at Ally. Yes. Love them dearly. Been with them 10 years, going on 11. So they, they, They're on our list next week for the earnings. So. Disclaimer, please. Ah, uh, yeah, you want to get there already? Oh, I said, don't stop playing with me. <laughs> Executive <laughs> producer Rashad. <laughs> Let's get in. He's like, yo, go ahead, man. All right, so before we go any further, man, we ain't even going to get, yeah, somebody says snow. Yeah, we know. We know snow's in the background. We'll get to that later. All right, so do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and risk wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. Please do your own homework. And we've been telling y'all the homework and everybody keeps asking, what's the homework? If y'all listen, the homework has been given. He gives out assignments every week. Yeah, so yeah, shout out to yeah. everybody doing it. They work and uh, doing their own research. So let's get into this. Um, first, we give you the rundown of, of Earn Your Leisure. This week, big, big episode. Shout out to my boys, Aaron and David, uh, Black and Mobile. Um, dope, dope brothers Philly, Philly. out of Philadelphia. They have hmm. it, like the Uber Eats for Black restaurants. Yep, yep, yep. That's the easiest way to explain it. They created a mobile app for only Black um, restaurants and they deliver food from black restaurants to, to people in, in their homes. Mm -hmm. And um, they're killing the game. They're in Baltimore, they're in Philly, Atlanta, and they're coming to Brooklyn. Two weeks, they'll be in Brooklyn. Um, and they made over $500,000 in revenue this last year, looking to expand on that this year. 26-year-old yeah. twins, dope, dope episode, vintage, yeah. vintage EYL. So Just a different level of hustle. When you want to talk about hustle and innovation, these That's two insane. Are For That's delivery, that amount of money. Yeah. yeah, they pulled out. They, they you'll hear the story, but I'm talking two wheels. We're not talking cars when they deliver. They talking bikes, and they had the bike outside. So, um, shout out to those brothers, nah, man. They're incredible. They're shout, incredible. Shout out to them, man. And uh, also, also, um, on Wednesday, EYL University, uh, Sabine, our good friend Sabine, is teaching a class on legal matters, how to trademark properly, yeah. yep, how to protect your trademark. That's extremely important for all entrepreneurs. So check that out. And I got a financial planning class on Saturday. So yeah. check that out. And shout out to everybody that was in the book club yesterday. We saw the new book in there. Yeah. Shout so out to in this there. might be the greatest show ever. Ian said that he's going to drop 120. So <laughs> 128. DeJuan Wagner. Remember DeJuan Wagner? They put up 100. Yeah. Shout out to D. Wagner. D. Wagner. Um, so yeah, that's- Y'all doing something tomorrow. You can't say it. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh no! Oh, Wednesday. That's Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Oh no! 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 Not yet. Not yet. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not tomorrow, though, bro. <laughs> um, all right. Damn, all right. <laughs> I'm just trying to set the pick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So let's let's, <laughs> let's 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 get into this. Um, but first, first, we gotta we gotta address some things. Um, Hold on, let me get you the proper intro. We had the major look. Let's put let's put some things in perspective. Let's get it all in perspective. Let's get things in perspective. Let's get it all in perspective, yeah, man. You know, it. at EYL, we don't we, we address things when we need to address it, but we address it on proper platforms. Yeah. That's the beauty of having your own platform. And uh, Market Mondays is the biggest investment show in the world. The big show. That's a fact. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, we got a couple of things that we got to address, unfortunately, but it's, it's, it's good though, because you got to, you know, make some things known and, and clarify some things. People mm -hmm. might have some questions. So. There's a lot of back and forth going on on social media right now. We're not going to really go into it too much, um, two gentlemen. But uh, I'm going to address everything. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible so we can get to the money. Mm -hmm. But let's let's talk about it. Um, so, you know, a lot of people hit me up like, yo, you're going to say something, Tony, the closer, Tony, 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 Tony. Let's just say this right now. If you ever watched During Your Leisure, we never spoke on any person. Mm -hmm. It just goes against our moral code, like the way we was brought up. We got to be very careful how we speak because sometimes when you say things, you can't take them back, and you say it in the heat of the moment. And we see people that you know doing thirty years in jail or in debt. So, Tony, you know, we met him uh, one time and uh, we had dinner. We had lunch, lunch in Miami with our family. Yeah. Um, invited them for mm -hmm. my man MG. I had my son Troy had his family, his wife MG had his wife. And I told him, I looked him straight in the eye. We had a good conversation for two hours. I looked mm -hmm. him in his eye and said, bro, if we ever have a misunderstanding, if we ever have any issue, 
I'm never going to speak about you publicly. We're going to we're going to talk privately. So people are like, yo, you should say something. Nah, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I can never speak bad about another man, especially another black man. It's just I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's the first thing. I I just can't. It's right. just, I just can't do that. And we never have. We never will. No, nah, I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't attack person's character. I don't. Yeah. I can't. I just can't do yeah. that. So, but but what what we what we can do is um we have to address a, a couple of things that even bigger than that situation that people might have questions about. But let's keep it all in perspective. Mm -hmm. As far as Earn Your Leisure, 141 episodes. Market Monday, 64 episodes. That's 205 episodes. Um, over the two and a half years that we've been in existence, seven seven point three million watch hours. Um, we have videos on vending machines, trucking, merch, stocks, real estate, Airbnb, crypto, and of course, stocks. Everything that you pretty much can think of, right? Mm -hmm. So no, it's never been done on scale like this ever, especially for our culture, never in history. We introduced you to some people that you might have heard of, Spurgo, uh, Wall Street Trapper, MG the Mortgage Guy, Alice Good Energy, and of course, Ian Dunlap, <laughs> the, the master, master, the master, master investor, himself. some of, some of your favorites, right? That's what that's what Earn Your Leisure has done for the people. Um, so you know, it, it's some people, you know, people say things without having a full understanding of what they're actually saying. The problem with that is that it's not true. So we, you know, people, some people think that you can you can pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. Ian, how much did you pay to get on Earn Your Leisure? Not a dollar. And truth be told, it had to take some damn convincing to get on. <laughs> you cannot to be you, real. You cannot pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. We have never, and yeah. I'm not even saying like, I'm not knocking somebody that's doing that. Yeah. I'm just saying that's not, we have never accepted a dollar. You can't pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. And we've been offered a bag. You can't pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. Multiple bags. So if anybody says that they pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. Or Market leisure, Mondays, because I can't afford what Cuban would. Market Mondays, value. we've never, and we never paid for a guest. So facts. let's just get that straight. This is facts. No, we don't. I'm going to be real. He stopped me from paying <laughs> one of the biggest artists. Yeah, with yeah. a bunch of TV shows, who this is modeled yeah. after. Yeah, that's a fact. Just so to be real, he was like, "Don't do that." So let's so let's do that. Let's let's do that. Nobody has ever paid to get an earn your leisure. If you ever find somebody that says they paid to get an earn your leisure, show proof. I give you every single thing in my in my brokerage account. Um, now some people are saying, "Okay, you get paid on the back end." Let's put this in perspective as well. If you say that, you you obviously have never watched Earn Your Leisure because. Like I said, we had 205 episodes, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. We've said this several different times. We have affiliate program. If right. you go on our website, we have a tab that says EYL affiliate. affiliate alumni program. If we have 10 affiliate programs out of 205 episodes, that's 4% of the episodes. It's no secret. <laughs> it's labeled, the websites are labeled, most of them are, are labeled EYL in there. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. We've spoke about that. So to try to say like, that's a secret, you just probably never watched Earn Your Leisure. You're just not aware of the content mm -hmm. because it's not, it, we never apologize about, about business. That's the difference. We never apologize about it. Do we put out anybody's program? Absolutely not. We have 10. That lets you, you know how many people we can, we turn down every single day. So we have 10 affiliate programs. They're listed on our website mm -hmm. under the affiliate tab. Who knew? <laughs> Surprise. So, and trust me, it's not as it's not as lucrative as you think it is. So, so that means that 190 something episodes we never got a dollar from. That is a fact. Big fact. No, that's a big fact. Big fact. So, okay, but you know what? I'm gonna go even a step further. Yeah, he turned the page. Affiliate affiliate marketing is, is extremely important to entrepreneurs. So, you know what? In true EYL fashion, maybe we should do an episode on affiliate marketing. Document the process. Show you, show you best practices. Document the process. So you too can get money. That's the fact. I, I buy courses. Wall Street Trapper is well documented. One of my family members wanted to learn about stocks. I brought his course. Mm -hmm. We spoke about that this weekend. No, it's a fact. I brought his course yeah, for fact. her. Yeah. Like I'm not, I, don't, I can't teach you it the way he can. And it's already bundled together. I'm going to buy Wall Street Trapper's course and give yeah. it to you. That's my idea. Yeah. I, I did that for four of my guys. Yeah. And we made, I make no secret, right? Our, our guys at the Cheat Code. Literally, they said, Troy, you don't have to pay. I said, that's not how we do business. I support what y'all doing. I'm paying. Guess what? My brother's in. He's paying too. And and, and we make sure that the price is cheaper than it, any place you can get it. Mm -hmm. And we have refund policies for everybody. Fact. So, I mean, what do you want? <laughs> okay. So let's, let, let's, let's, let's get into, like I said, I'm going to try to run this down as smooth as possible because I really hate to do this, but I, you know, sometimes you got no choice. Marcus. Marcus went on Big Facts podcast with us um, that came out seven months after his episode. Mm -hmm. And he said something that he shouldn't have said. 
I, I mean, like I'm not I don't you don't stand with somebody in something if they're if they're in error just yeah. because you're friends that's like, true brother we, if Troy makes a mistake he gonna call me Troy you made a mistake bro and, and vice versa right like we've had episodes and we're like you know what yo Troy you shouldn't have said that yo Shadi you probably shouldn't have said that yeah. we that's what we do that's my I, Troy's my brother like that's really my brother if he makes a mistake Troy you made a mistake bro right Marcus made a mistake he made a mistake he what he said he should not have said he took accountability for it. He has a video on his page. He explained what he, if you want the further explanation, you gotta, I didn't say what he said. Mm -hmm. How can Earn Your Leisure be held accountable for something that was said by somebody that is not part of Earn Your Leisure, first of all, mm -hmm. is not on our platform, second of all, and we didn't say it, third of all. So now people was like, well, you, you were kind of encouraged it when he said it. So my thing is this, I never said that I was a financial expert in every single area. I've been in the financial services for 12 years. I, I'm to license life insurance, investments, estate planning. I'm not a credit expert. I go to, when I buy a car, I go to the dealership and I say, I want this car. I don't know about nothing about car gurus. I'm just being honest. I'm not, I'm not like knocking the hustle. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. So if you think that, okay, this information could lead people to do something, um, what makes you think that I can't be led in that same direction? That's the difference. We never held, that's why we, I didn't wear no jewelry on purpose because I'm still the same person that I was before. We never held ourselves to be financial gurus. We started a platform to learn just like everybody else wanted to learn. Yeah. I never said I knew every single thing on earth. Yeah. If I knew everything on earth, I wouldn't have Earn Your Leisure because Earn Your Leisure teaches me just like it teaches everybody else. But that's the beauty of it, right? Like we always, and that's, that's true, right? We're just gonna provide the information. Like you said, we never claim to be an expert in anything but we're going to find people who know a lot about the information in their, their field. And so that's what we do, man. That's the model. Information is going to be on us. Actually, My guy got notes, notes today, be. boy. We yeah. also we also give you a disclaimer. On, we should probably start doing that on a podcast also, right? On every I interview. Told, I told you this before. Even if I say it, do your research. We never said do anything that anybody says just because they said it. Mm -hmm. This is why we have the disclaimer. You have to do your own research. That's common sense. Yeah. Second, vetting. This is something that's come up. We have, once again, we have 205 episodes, right? Let's say people might have issues with, let's say five people. I'm just throwing that number out there. Let's mm -hmm. say five, and that's probably high, but let's say five, right? That's 2.4% of the episodes that we have, right? So now people are saying, okay, we need to do a better job of vetting. And that might be a, a honest critique, but let's look at this in totality. Look who Earn Your Leisure brought you. People that you would have never heard of in life mm -hmm. that, are superstars now, mm -hmm. right? So you have a problem with 1%, 2% of the guests, and now the whole, this is the problem with black people. We only criticize each other. That's why all the white men, I don't get, I don't buy into that because there's no white man tearing us down. There's no white man talking. It's black people that criticize black people the most. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have never spoken about another man on our show or another woman, and we will never. I don't know how to do that. We built our platform on giving information. We didn't build our platform on critiquing somebody else or trying to tear something. I don't know how to do that yeah. because and there's no, because there's real consequences for that in the real world. Yeah. And it's like, when you see us, you see us by ourselves, and you see us in every neighborhood. Like I said, you see us in Brooklyn, you see us in the Bronx, you see us in Crenshaw and everywhere we go, at least one person comes up, yo bro, y'all changed my life. Airbnb, stocks, crypto, because this is who we are yeah. before any of this. So it's like, I don't know how to live on the internet. I'm only a real life person because this is what I was before there was an Instagram. I was the same person. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, there, there's real consequences for you for saying certain things outside of the internet. In on the life. internet, you can in say whatever life. you want. Yeah, in real life. That's just reality. That's a fact. I, I will say, even if it's one or 2%, we know being black that has to be zero. No, it's a fact. But we, we, we're that. not going to get the same pass. I, I, I'm, I'm just playing because I want people to be like, yo, they didn't say anything and nobody playing devil and advocate. That's how I want to end it. Accountability. Yeah. Once again, we're not we're not calling out nobody. We we can't do that. Nope. But we will take accountability if need be. And if and, and if certain things need to become better mm -hmm. in the process, we'll do that. Yeah. But just understand the institution that Earn Your Leisure has built. Right. Bro. With, no, like, with, just, with, with no blueprint. With no blueprint. Like I, I was I was in Dykeman the other day, person was like, yo, y'all, y'all got nothing to follow. And I thought about it, I'm like, that's a fact. We started this in, in Troy's living room. He's a, he's a teacher, I'm a financial advisor. We don't have no expertise in this. I never said we did. 
Yeah. We figuring it out as we go. The, see, that's the beautiful part though, right? The people that are here right now, the people on tube, the earners in here, y'all elevated us to that point where like, yo, y'all held in that regard. And we take, we and, take that. And, no, in deep reference. In deep reference. Everywhere yo. we go is deep. And that's why we don't have security. I'm not knocking anybody that has to, we don't have security. You see us, you would, we would our family or some people that we grew up with. Yeah. Anywhere we go. Every time. And we're not hard to find. Like we literally are out, we're around. <laughs> We're around in a lot of neighborhoods. So once again, it's like, if we need to take accountability, all on the table. Even with that, when Marcus said that, if I should have processed that quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll own, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I didn't process it quickly enough. I'm thinking like other people might've thought, run the play. <laughs> okay, my, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm sorry, like, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know, what, what do you want me to say? I can't apologize for something that I didn't say that's not on our platform. That came out eight months. And then yeah, the last thing I'm gonna say is you gotta be careful with this scam award. I told one of my friends a couple months ago, I said, the financial literacy community, the only two things that could tear it apart is infighting and the word scammer. We've seen this happen with the conscious community a few years ago. You label somebody a scammer, just understand, just do your, do your research and do your due diligence. And before you just say that word, yeah. and I'm not talking about nobody, I'm just saying just in general. And even to link us, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that is so disrespectful as far as what we have done, our contribution, okay. our contribution has been unmatched. No, that's a fact. Market Mondays every single week for over a year. Classic should have went diamond. Information. So we just gotta be very careful how we speak. And I understand it's emotion and I understand like, you know what I'm saying? But we gotta be, and I'm not talking to any person, I'm talking to the whole community. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful how we speak to each other, the words that we use and the language that we use. If critique, everybody could use some critique, even us. And if you, if you critique us, I'm not mad at that, but critique us in a manner that's constructive, that we all can learn from and that we all can get better from. And build from. Right? That's as, it. As a community. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I want to say. Yeah. I want everybody to get along. No fighting. If things need to be corrected, they would be corrected. That's that. That's it, man. Hey. All right, let's, get, let's, hey, let's hey. get some money, man. Hey. Let's get into some money. Mm -hmm. You ready to pull a Will Chamberlain? You dropping 100? Of course. I'm doing 128. And now to our regularly scheduled program. Now back to the money. Man. <laughs> let's get to this paper, y'all. Let's do it. All right, uh, give me access to be able to share and then we get rocking and rolling. Yeah, you're good now, bro. Thank you. Let's see. Mm. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Sure sound. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. Uh, Market Mondays, the game inside of the game. Disclaimer, uh, do not remix, copy, reproduce my material without written permission to do so or legal action will be taken. Uh, join the stock club. If you want the greatest stocks on the planet, as well as the greatest entries, join the stock club. Please put yes in chat if I've made you money from stock club. So for those who are unfamiliar with me, can see that I uh, have provided value for you and help, help you. So you get the four best stocks for retirement the best places to get in and out of the market, the best growth stocks to invest in, the two best places where to get into the market, additional entries uh, from the algorithm Athena, 28 additional bonus picks on the year, a 10 minute call from 9 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday, and the amazing stock club call that we have every single week after the show. August 1st through 3rd, we will have a stock club flash sale. So for those of you that join a uh, flash sale, you will not get the trading room component added, but for those of you that join tonight or if any time you join at full price, you will be able to get that added as well. Um, for those of you that want to join the crypto club, um, you can click the link in my bio or you can join here. Uh, you get the five safest cryptocurrencies to invest in. The three best prices of where to invest every month given by myself and the dream team. Shout out to the dream team. Three bonuses given every month. Additional entries from the algorithm Athena, three surprise bonus picks on the year, private telegram channel to receive gem of the week from me and the dream team. And that will come out on Friday. 
And uh, for those of you, when the market was at 50 something thousand, when I told you guys we dropped down to 29, 28,000 and some change, um, that is an indication of the kind of prices you will be able to get because we'll be able to tell you when some of these things are going to drop before most people don't know about it. And we'll be announcing uh, the Dream Team private trading boot camp coming soon. Trading after dark will resume in September. And the stock club call is tonight at 9 p.m. Central. Um, shout out to the Red Panda squad. Um, and, and everyone in the stock club, Jerry, I'll see you on tonight. I appreciate you so much, but we'll have an amazing time there. Subscribe to my YouTube and join redpanda.com for exclusive information and updates there. And once again, college athletes, I want to sponsor you this season. So if you are interested in being sponsored by Red Panda, send me an email to Ian at joinredpanda.com. And Stock Market Secrets Part 3 will be released tomorrow exclusively on TikTok. So here's my favorite tool to be able to search for stocks by sector in less than 30 seconds. Please write this site down, fknol.com, and let me show it to you. So let's say you're on a site and you want to look for like last year or even this year, momentum stocks. You can click here and it will easily list all momentum stocks. And the part that sucks about investing is that 80% of your time is digging through things that will give you an edge or potentially make you better. But look at this. You have a list of leverage bonds, list of 5G ETFs, aerospace defense, aerospace ETFs, Africa, right? So we can look through here and scroll and print these out or put these in an Excel sheet for those of you that like Excel. And you can have a list of potential momentum stocks that are available. The site is fknol.com. Or well, let's say you wanted to go through the dogs of the Dow, which I'll go through later in full. But you can look at Chevron, WBA, Cisco. That's an example of some of the things that you can do. Or if you wanted to scroll down further, and let's say if you wanted to look at alternatives by hedge fund and private equity, you can then get a list of potential companies. So you see Blackstone, which you talked about uh, last week, as well as BlackRock, KKR, Carlisle Group. Um, IAC, Aries Capital, you can then begin to segment what type of companies or what kind of sectors you would like to be involved in. So let's say you wanted to have some socially responsible companies. This tool easily segments them for you and then you can have a list. So right here, this is a list of 25, put 25 in chat for me, a list of 25 potential responsible ETFs that you can invest in. And then if you click here, you can then see the remaining 26 through 47. Or let's say if you want a large mega cap, you can go here. If you want bond ETFs, you can go there. Iron, Italy, right? That's the great part about this site is that you can dig in and make up. So kudos to my guy in Stock Club. If we want to look at natural gas ETFs, it will give us the five best ones that are currently available. And let's say if we even want to look at like dividend yield ETFs. If we want a dividend ETF, so we can click right here and it will give us a list of them here that we can be able to look through. So that way, even gaming, list of gaming ETFs. So this way you never have to depend on anyone or even me uh, for to know where to invest. So these Activision Blizzard I already told you. Great. Electronic Arts. Amazing. Take two interactive. Great. Why? Why? OK. Zynga has been doing great this year. So now you have a list of companies that you could potentially invest in. And you never need anyone else. I have no financial ties to this company. I just thought it was a great damn resource. And I wanted to share with you guys, fknol.com. Put fire in chat if you thought this was a great resource for you. So I got tagged in this article. A Japanese billionaire invests half of his $100 billion fund into technology stocks, right? And I know you guys have heard me beat this drum forever, but let's break this down. So. 60% of the fund is in two holdings. So two of the top holdings of SB management accounts for more than 60% of the entire investment portfolio. Now this son has a net worth of 45 billion. He's in the top richest 30 people in the world. He was 29th on a billionaire list across the world, right? So, and he's also one of the richest men in Japan. And so I'll tell you, you don't have to listen to me. And thank you, Stephen, for tagging me in this. You don't have to listen to me, but look at what the top 1% of the 1% are doing and also what the top hedge funds are doing. So let's look at, and then at the end of the first quarter, 
doing this, SoftBank reported $17 billion. Absolutely amazing. The largest ever quarterly profit by the Japanese firm. So coming off a recession, coming off the pandemic, they invested heavily into tech. And now you can see what the multiples are now presenting. This is a key lesson. Put this in chat. You want hyper focus on a few excellent companies. I'll say it again. You want hyper focus on a few excellent companies. You don't need 26. You don't need 34. You don't need 50 stocks. Right. Unless you have some great competitive edge that other people don't have, you want hyper focus on a few excellent companies in your portfolio. Let's look at some of the things he invested in. And I saw people even in, in kudos to stock charts. I was seeing people say, well, most funds only want 10 to 20 percent return. Not true. Put yes in chat if the some of the stocks that I recommended have got you over 12 percent return in a year and then put the percentages in chat. Do you think these fund managers that are managing billions of dollars just want 10% return? They want minimum drawdown, but maximum upside. Please put this in chat. Minimum drawdown, which means minimum loss, but you want the most gain possible. Amazon, Facebook, PayPal, Microsoft, not a bad four. Google, Salesforce, Netflix, TSM. Great list. You can make the argument in video over TSM. Uh, shout out to my guy, Clint. Clint was asking, hey, what do you think about NVIDIA when it splits? It's going to do well. We have seen historically what splits can do for a great company. And then also homework. Please write this down. Homework assignment number one. Go look at the top 25 companies that have split and then see what the average growth of them over a five year period tends to be so you can understand what the growth could be going forward. Last week, I, I shared for the first time ever that one of my hidden secrets is to look at Vanguard and BlackRock and see if they own the stock that I'm looking to invest in as a hedge. And me being a minnow and they are whales, I want to follow what the whales are doing, right? So it's a market maker strategy that I am using to ensure safety. Now, to go into that, do a fund by fund analysis. And you want to look at the top 10 ETFs to see what they're invested in. And I could make the argument if they are not currently invested in, you should probably hold off unless another market maker is in that stock heavily. For me, I'm going to write this down. For me, I need to see the stocks that I'm looking in to be in seven out of 10 ETFs. Please put seven out of 10 in chat. That way I'm able to have safety. And if even if they reallocate, that's fine. But if I see that a stock that I'm picking between those two entities with that much money under management, if they are only having that stock in one or two funds, it's usually a sign that it is not that good. Um, Peter Lynch has an amazing quote that pretty much sums up everything that you need to know about investing in one simple quote. Absent a lot of surprises, stocks are relatively predictable over a 20 year period as to whether they're going to go to, going to be higher or lower. In a two or three years, you might as well flip a coin to decide. And the truth is, the longer that you hold an investment, the higher the return will be for you and a higher the margin of safety. Drawdown over a one to, let's say, three week period for most stocks, extremely high for my long term investors that, that are seasoned. Would you agree with this or not? Now, over a six to 12 month period, it smooths out a hell of a lot. Once you get three years in, four years into a stock, if your stock has not went up from the cost in which you bought it, unless it was a high, and with quality stocks, even if you buy them at tops or highs, within a two year period, they should have made new highs by then. This quote tells you everything that you need to know. Please put in chat, I will have the discipline to hold great companies for 20 years. Stop looking for flip. And that's why when you guys ask for plays, I'm like, don't, you're playing with your life looking for plays. Look to hold for a long term. Let's look at how to use the Buffett indicator really quick. And this is a long term valuation metric. So if you look from 1970 to right now, you can see that market to GDP is a long-term valuation indicator for stocks. Become super popular as of recent, and you can see the levels in which we've hit. So now we are at one of the highest values that we've been for the Wilshire Fire 
in comparison to GDP. And this is what the, uh, excuse me, what the algorithm, how it's designed in order to be able to get this measurement, right? So normally, and of course, 2000 was different. 2007 is different. And I think we were pushing up for a lot of different reasons. We didn't have the kind of quantitative easing now that we did, uh, excuse me, in 2000, quantitative easing was not as high as it is now. That's one of the reasons money is very cheap. Loans are very easy to come by. But what you want to read, you want to hit the all so you can see the entire data set and then see what those tops are. So people are saying because this high was broken, we should break down. Write this down. Normally, we have three hard pushes on this indicator before we have a pullback. Later tonight, I'm going to reveal for the first time ever one of the cycles that I actually use to be able to predict a market crash pretty reliably. Um, now, when this indicator is this high, I'm not looking to add on more shares at an aggressive rate unless it's in the ideal spot. I still think you should buy every month if you're doing dollar cost averaging. If you're looking to get in at exact prices, you should then load the boat proverbially at that price when you're ready. But when we are this extended, this is the same as a top. And that's why I tell every investment trader, like if you can read one chart, you can read them all. You do not want to then overextend and make your first investments when we are super overextended. In a long-term 20-year macro period, and even for those people that invested in 2000, same thing. Over a five- or six-year period, you should be fine. But from 2000, we slid down. 2009 was the bottom. Great. And, and it will continue to rise. If it ever gets to almost its 50% value line, or let's say 35%, and it dips below there, you then want to buy very heavy. Um, so you can see what the mean average is here which is mean the middle of where we should be. If we ever drop below that mean line, that is a place where you want to look to load the boat. And over a five-year period, you want to hold for a long period of time. Now, somebody asked me an amazing question of what should we do if we hit a decade or a flat decade or a dead decade and the market isn't really moving. So the best time to prepare for what to do is when that situation is not here. The market is rising. Apple hit an all-time high this morning. Great. You have to prepare for disaster when everything is going right. So let's say we have a 10-year period when the market is just flat. This is when you would build your base. You still will want to buy every month because what normally happens, and you'll see this when you do your homework, and I'm going to give you an assignment to be able to find out, but every single month you want to accumulate a certain amount of shares or year end, you need to have a certain amount of shares that you want to have under your portfolio. This is what happens, however. Markets that hit a high, people will want to buy then. But when the market is flat, and because remember a couple months ago, everyone was like, oh my God, Apple is moving so slow. Ian, give me something else. And I'm like, you get a chance to build a base here. That was when it was in the 120s. Now it's in the 140s, and everyone's like, when do you think it's going to come down? It was down a couple months ago. The same principle for that, being patient, because the entire game of making money from long-term investing is being patient, right? If you're able to do that on a monthly basis, you would be able to sit through that for a decade or a five or six year period. Like we had to do with Microsoft and Barman was running it. And then when he was no longer CEO, the company took off to the upside. We talked about last week, how um, this was built the base around Tesla. And then it took off to the upside, but it was tough to sit through. So please put in chat, what is the annual amount of shares that you're looking to buy? And then if we ever hit a dead or a flat decade, you still want to be invested in the market for the long term, because when things rocket up to the upside, you don't want to say, hey, I wish I would have been invested when this was a lot cheaper. Quiz question. How often does a flat flat decade occur within a century? If you don't know, I want you to go look at the Dow Jones, go look at the S&P 500 and then go see out of 100 years. How often do we have a flat rate of return? for a 10 year period. I thought this uh, this graph from a uh, visual capitalist was amazing about the world's 100 biggest companies. And normally the signs are right in front of you. So if you wanna know what companies to invest in, they're usually listed. So of course, Apple has a highest value of 2.1 trillion, but this is one most people don't talk about. 
This is one. Ha put in chat if you researched this company before or if you've never, ever heard of it. 1.9 trillion value. Then Microsoft, right? Amazon at number four. Alphabet, Google is at number five. Facebook at, is at number six. You can go to visualcapitalist.com and see. But when you're looking internationally, so for those of you that are like, hey, which company should I invest in? You should look at the ones that have the highest value and then look at the prices that best serve you to be able to get in. But you can see Walmart, Nike, Netflix, Disney, United Health, MasterCard, Visa, PayPal. So these are, are the service providers. And then we can see banking all in this bubble. And you can see certain industries dwarf others. NVIDIA is over here at $331 billion worth of value right? T-Mobile is a little bit smaller. So when you're making a comparison, you can look at a chart like this and then say, hey, these are the ones that would be best served for me to be in. And then UK Unilever, AstraZeneca. Great. Those are two you can potentially invest in. Ireland, Medtronic, Accenture. So if you want international exposure, you are best looking at the companies that are the biggest in the space to have safety. But you can check this slide out in full at Visual Capitalist. Uh, dot com. And there's always this, this wonder or quote of can people beat the market? So when I came up with my formula for how to beat the market, the primary thought was, I think the best way to beat the market is by anchoring myself to it. So if I, the two indexes, if I tie myself to Dow and excuse me, uh, S and P 500 and NASDAQ or Dow and Russell, those would be the anchor. So if we have extreme drawdowns, and we go down 50%, what people try and do is pick stocks that will outperform those on the way up. I was like, why not use, if we have pretty much a guaranteed return of 7 to 12% for an average investor, for an exceptional investor, you can probably get more. Uh, investing has considerable risk. Please consult your advisor. It does not mean that you're able to because I am able to. But the core of beating the market, in my opinion, in my thesis for what I've developed is being tied to the market first. That has to be your base. Your second level then has to be an asset class, which pairs with that and can go a little bit faster. And that's where the two technology companies come. And I, like I said, I love the gentleman. I really do. But once you hone in on a system, you should be able to get some solid returns from good companies that people have heard of. So like Moderna. It's up 271.8% in one year since I caught it. Kudos to the stock club members that got in on it. Shopify is up 260% since I told people about it in stock club April 8th of 2020. TECL, I do not recommend this to you to buy at a higher price during extreme lows or a recession or an aggressive pullback. If you have the capital and you can withstand the drawdown, it may be a place that you can enter. But TECL is up 347.6% since I called it April 8, 2020 for Stock Club. Yes, it is possible to outperform the S&P 500, but the truth is most people do not want the workload that comes with that. But my core philosophy is the way to beat the market is to have your base tied to the market itself. Two tech, two index is designed to beat the market by investing in the market and letting the exposure do the rest for you. And even when you draw down, if tech bleeds down 75% when the market is going down 50, the drawdowns are going to be a lot slower as well investing into the S&P 500. Here are the top 15 holdings of the Russell 2000, which is a growth sector in my opinion. And let's look at some of the stocks in that top 15. All right, first up we have AMC on the Russell 2000. You can see it is above this 200-day uh, moving average. Amazing. If it ever drops back down to like 1283, that'd be a solid place to get in. You don't want to chase. Solid company, solid return. Great. You don't want to chase at bad prices. Look to hold for the long term if you're going to be in it, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go to plug. Let's go to the next one. P-L-U-G. You can see the same thing. You don't want to chase. Please put in chat. Don't chase based on. So the 200 is down here at 525. The yearly open was at 34. 64 right so you don't want to chase anybody who got in in the 70s are screaming right now please put this in chat it is all about the price in which you are able to enter because you could have a great momentum movement 
base stock like this. But if you waited six or seven months to get into it and then you finally got in at 57, it was not the ideal time to get into that stock. Get in at prices that will put you at a advantage that most people will not. And talk about FOMO. If there's one stock I wish I would have called last year, it would have been Novavax. If you look here um, in March, it was at nine dollars and one cent. Um, 200 day was at 93.53. It ran up to 331 and it almost dropped back down to this yearly open at what is this price? 112.92. It was there for a brief moment. Um, I didn't have my alert set, so that's a great lesson for you. So you don't make the same mistake. Set your alert if there's a price in which you want to get in, and then you can see it went from 112 to 331. It came back down, I almost touched it again. It's at 188. So and this is why when you go back and study history, you can see going back to 1995, Novavax historically has done these kind of big booms and busts, right? So back in 96, it got to 166.62 and then fell apart. In 2000, 248 was a high and it came down to $89.55. But look at these historical moments in 2000. It got to a high of 311 and then it fell all the way down to $33.37. And then it had a couple small mountain tops here. But the next time this happened was in 2015. I remember this move went to 300. And then before 2016 came in, it fell to $22.43. The homework that I want you to do on Novavax is once it falls 80% or 70%, how long does it take to go back up? So we had a big boom in 2000. We then had another one in 2015 and then again in 2021. Please take advantage. And then for those of you that love support and resistance, you can kind of see the areas. 171.59 is a secondary resistance area. So in 2002, 2005, 2009, it hit those levels over and over again and then fell apart, followed by the big mountain moves up to 300. And you can see here, if we look at this level here at 282.96, it normally does not sustain that price. Once it gets in that area or that zone, it starts to fall apart. Next week, I'm going to do a full breakdown on what I call buy and sell boxes. But this is an example. So I will go across this entire screen. And I will mark off this area, double click it. I will change this color to red. And then I would know as soon as I look at the chart what that looks like pink. Let me make it red. Okay, great. Make it red. And I know as soon as it goes up to these levels, it does not sustain these wicks or these thin lines right here. That is an indication that the price went there, but because it's thin, the prices were not, were not able to be sustained long term. So you can see anytime we got into this red zone, they were not able to hold their price. Does that make sense? Yes or no? And then also there are buy areas or buy zones that you should mark off, but I'll go over that full. Speeding through the Russell, this is the notorious GME. We've talked about this one enough. Let's go to RH. Great. We've seen this one break up to the upside tremendously. Um, once again, yearly open. 448 and yes the price is high but you want to pay for quality 448.44 was a great entry for it the low of that was 412 and it went to 713 if you're not using the yearly open you please 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 i'm begging you to put it on your chart let's look at pan something uh troy's talked about in addition to DraftKings, we can look at that you can see that they had a nice movement up they are then starting to breakdown if it gets down to this 200 day moving average of 2501 could be a great in place to enter secondary entry could be at the 85 26 area for those of you that are not using the 72 or the 100 around and out this list is uh ntla intella therapeutics had a hell of a push-up let's look at sun run and then you also want to go back since inception to see if the stock is good so let's look at CLF, and this is the reason why you want to go back since inception. So the five-year chart looks pretty smooth, right? The previous 
top of it was what 2017 12 dollars and 22 cent went down to 263 great it's at 23 bucks now but when you go back and zoom since the very beginning this is what you'll see in your opinion does this look like a good stock previous high was 121.95 fell all the way down uh, about a year and a half later to $11.81. Everyone said that they can live through a drawdown like this, but most can't. Great. All my technicians, you can kind of see it broke down again, came down to 31, 32 bucks, and it's just barely crossing above the 200 day moving average. Now it is to the upside, but when a stock historically falls like this, the probability of it going from here, say 1489 to getting back to this mountaintop of 102, is very low this is why you need to go look at since inception to see if the stock is truly remarkable dar on the other hand tells another story top and fell down to and that's why I say building the base is good and it hit this 200 fell apart and it's been on a tremendous run since 2020 you can see here uh at around 14 bucks would have been a great entry and now it is currently a 67 dollars and 54 cent when you look at this long-term chart and fully zoom out to see the macro picture it does a tremendous uh, service <laughs> to you to be able to know what it's doing same thing with decker's outdoor great momentum but they've been able to sustain it they are going up to the upside let's look at lad some of you asked about this in comparison to tesla i don't like it better than tesla of course but lad lithium motors is moving pretty damn strong uh he and this one is APPN. Once you get further down the list, I don't like them as much. Um, the top five or six are usually the best in an in index. And this is true here. Um, APPN is solid. Most people don't even know what the company actually does. But there are some better examples. Like if we go back to the deck chart, we can see. I like this chart a hell of a lot more than APPN. Can you agree? Yes or no? So you want to invest in companies that, of course, their stock is rising. Revenue is great. Profit margins are great, and then you want to choose safety. And I saw Rashad post this the other day, and a lot of you hit me like, man, Biden's about to crack down on tech. Um, so he's going to sign an order to crack down on big tech, boost competition across the board. And I think it sounds good, but hypothetically, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it will affect Apple, Microsoft, Google, AMD, NVIDIA, etc. And I understand this may be jarring if you're invested in tech, but historically, these kind of measures really don't move the market as much as they used to back in the early 2000s or prior to that. So in the words of the great philosopher, uh, Rocky Maivia, it doesn't matter that those kind of legislative practices are not going to have a tremendous effect on a top 10 tech companies. But I have 24, 25 reasons. But this is just one towards the end of the totem pole. Let's look at some of Joe Biden's donors. So. You have Donald here from Palomo Partners. He donated $9 million. We have James who donated quite a bit of money. Uh, and then we have Michael from Sequoia Capital. Please put in chat if you know what Sequoia does. He donated $3.5 million. These are some of the companies that Sequoia has funded. Apple, 3Com, Airbnb, Cisco, DoorDash, Clever, Dropbox, Evernote, Eventbrite, Gamefly, Green Dot, Inside.com. Kudos to Jason Calacanis. Instagram, Instacart, PayPal, Pilot, Ring Central, and Robinhood. Some of you have been asking what I think about Robinhood. We'll touch on it later. Could be a game changer, right? My point is, if that much money was donated to the campaign, do you really think there would be a hard tech crackdown when consumers aren't even complaining about tech monopolies in the same fashion in which they were in the early 2000s? What are you going to replace them with? So let's say if it does happen, right? Hypothetically. So if Instagram goes public, say Messenger goes public from Facebook, Apple Music, and let's say the App Store goes public. And I can make the argument, the artists that you love and the companies that you love, like Uber, Drake, DoorDash, Spotify, Instacart, Bumble, Tinder, none of those would exist without the Apple ecosystem. And they get paid a hefty percentage from all those companies to be on the platform. What do you think those would be worth? So with spinning off some of these companies or assets and making them publicly traded, will it be beneficial for the tech ecosystem or will it make it a bigger 
beasts. Sometime when you slay a dragon, it shows up with five more heads. This is the proverbial case for that. Amazon all time is up 214,000 percent all time. I know people love to make you feel like long term investing is not sexy. But when people start to tell you that and they hey, hey, here's the play long term, how many people have gotten 214,890 percent return? Say it with me. Long term investing is the wave. Say it with me. Long term investing is the wave. One more time. Say it with me. Long term investing is the wave. A lot of you are getting knocked out of your position to be able to take care of your family. And there's even arguments on even if you should look to build generational wealth, because in three generations, that typically goes away. Nevertheless, let's say by generation two, if the kids do mess it up, you can put it in the will. If there are certain entities that you want your money to go to or causes, at least you can do that. But the quick flipping leads to a lot of danger. I want you to hold stocks for at least one generation if you truly want generational wealth. Let's go through the top 30 stocks in the Dow and I'll tell you which ones are good or bad so you guys can never say I didn't tell you which ones were excellent and which ones were terrible. So Disney, absolutely amazing. One of the companies that I loved last year for sure. Absolutely amazing. Walmart, incredible. It's going to take a little bit of time to go back up, but Walmart is amazing. WBA. I don't like that much. Visa, love, 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 love. Verizon, I'm not big on telecom, so I don't like that one as, as much. United Healthcare, absolutely incredible. TRV, solid. Don't love them uh, to be in a portfolio, but they're very good. CRM, very damn good. Moves a little bit slower than most tech, but the company is amazing. Procter & Gamble, good. May take 18 to 24 months to go back up. In comparison to some of their competitors, but a very, very, very good company. We talked about Nike before, but I want to tell you, yes, Nike is amazing. Currently at 161.82, all time high 162.43. Do you think they'll break that high in the next three or four months? I say yes. You already know how I feel about my baby Microsoft. Absolutely amazing. Let's look at Merck. Don't like as much. JP Morgan. Led by the legendary Jamie Dimon. Yes. Love. Johnson & Johnson. Love. IBM. Not so much. Intel. Not so much. I think there are better uh, competitors there. If I had to pick between the two. Honeywell. One I haven't talked about a lot. But yes. Look at the entry. 212.84. If you're using uh, the yearly open as a second or third, maybe fourth way to get into the market. Solid. Home Depot. Everyone in construction absolutely should be investing in Home Depot if you have the money to do so. Goldman Sachs. Absolutely. Yes. Look at this. Entry. Potentially. 267 from the yearly open. Don't say I don't give you the game. I'm yearly open. 267. Currently at 380. I know people are talking about Goldman lost some of his luster. Yes, BlackRock competitively is edging some things out, but Goldman is still a powerhouse. Always has been, always will be. Let's look at Dow. Don't like it as much. Dow Chemical. Let's look at Coca-Cola. Solid company. Um, it's a little bit of a slower mover, but it's a good company overall. Let's look at Cisco. Yes, like this one a lot. Chevron. Energy has had a hell of a rebound this year like it let's go to caterpillar absolute love incredible company let's look at boeing called that one last year as well um and i told you guys the prices in which to get out of it it hit that price for those who of you who got out job well done you guys already know how i feel about apple absolutely yes amgen okay um but it is a safe investment and aggregate and let's look at this real quick this is why I always tell you to zoom out. So when some of you are like, hey, man, I don't know if a stock could go up over 30 years. If we go back to 1990 and then let's say skip to 2000 growth, right? 2000 to 2010, a little bit flat. And that's what we talked about building up that base. But look what happened from 2010 to 2020. Let's say your average price was 51 bucks. 
2020 end of year, it went up to 231, got to a high of 276. That is making money in your sleep for investing in great companies. This is why I tell you guys to hold for a long period of time. Let's look at American Express. Hell yes. I like Visa way more. Visa is a better company, but American Express has taken off to the upside. Great company, great investment. Same thing about building the basis, about knowing when to get in, right? And then let's go to 3M to round this out. Don't like 3M as much, but American Express, absolutely amazing. And oftentimes we feel like we don't have enough money to invest into the market. And you guys can go Google this story, but uh, Mr. Earl only makes $12 an hour. I think he never made more than $25,000 a year. It ended up with a net worth of a half a million dollars from investing in the market. Now, let's be real. If you're an adult over, let's say, 33 years old and you make more than $12 an hour, you do not have an excuse for why you cannot do this. The most important thing is to consistently invest. The only reason why most people don't have enough money to retire is because they are not consistently investing in the market. I don't make any money if you go to Vanguard or BlackRock or Fidelity. Um, but it's going to be the thing that causes you the most amount of stress. And you know, like I know, when the money isn't there, it's always there in the back of your mind. Be mindful. You are buying clothes and shoes and accessories and that like i said is a mechanism to get money from your pocket into the businesses and families of others you have to then invest in yourself first please put invest in yourself first in chat but if this brother can only make 12 dollars an hour and did not have all the information and this kind of information for me and others and all these books to be able to know what to do there's no excuse going for it why you won't be able to generate the same kind of results or better even if you don't make a lot Next week, I will make the case for why Doge is dead. And hopefully I can get a brother on um, who's doing pretty well in Doge. But the thing that I want to stress to you guys is to take, because even when, when a clip got posted, people were like, oh, you don't know. Da, da, da. And I'm like, I love that. I love when you say I don't know, because I do my damnedest. And for those of you who know me, everything I say is very strategic um, and intentional. But when we are continuously hovering and a price range from 23 cent and it touched 18 and there is no upward movement yet. And it's not just because all of crypto is down, right? And if Doge was such a dominant force, then why would the case for baby Doge and the spinoffs? And, but we'll talk about that full and next week. And I want to give you some tools to help you understand what are good areas to get in. And I'll tell you, if it gets to eight cent, if you're willing to hold it for a five or six year period, you have a good chance of then being profitable in it, but we'll cover that next week. But two tech and two index, I want to stress that again. And I want you to choose safety over sensationalism. Sometimes when you guys are trying to get these big ass gains, you're going to destroy your account and you're going to destroy your peace of mind. Put in chat, choose safety over sensationalism. And for those of you, if you are able to get 20, 25, 35% gain, you wouldn't believe the amount of money that you're then able to reallocate from your primary businesses or when you get raises, a lot of times mistakes are made and you drew down or lost 60%. And now you're looking for something to grow money really fast because of the prior mistakes that have been made. I totally get it. I've been there too, but it's a never ending cycle of choosing hype over quality. Let's look at Amazon real quick. Uh, 50% of course, in Q3 of 2020, and these metrics are pretty much the same, but Online stores drives half of their revenue. 21% comes from third party sellers. The physical stores are only 4%. Subscription services are only 7%. And Amazon Web is going to be great. I think that presence in the online stores, I think that percentage will grow with the new CEO being in place. And I think Amazon Web services will expand even more because there's more that they can do in that B2B community to, to grow that market share even more. Once again, here are some of the safest stocks to invest in. Google, NVIDIA, Shopify, Twilio, ILMN, and then Intuitive Surgical. So write these down. Google, NVIDIA, Shopify, Twilio, ILMN, and ISRG. Once again, here are the dividend stocks that I like. Apple, even though it pays a small one, is there. Lowe's, Costco, McDonald's, Nike, Visa, Starbucks. Starbucks pays a small one as well, but for the growth that you get, you can get a dividend in a quality company. I don't want you to chase low quality companies that pay a higher dividend because they often end up cutting those down 
if the market is not going. So a prime example of that is AT&T. People are like, well, the dividend is great. Okay, great. The high, once again, was in 1999, 59 bucks and 88 cent, which for telecom isn't bad, but overall 59 bucks is not the highest target that a quality quote unquote company should have. Bonham when said before, like AT&T almost specializes in buying um, assets at the highest prices and then selling them at a dramatic discount. And then if we zoom into this year, we can see the yearly open 29.39. We had a huge drop, but this pattern of them dropping over time has been there. I don't even know many people with AT&T cellular service. So because the dividend is great, that's the only way they can attract most people to invest in it. But then if that dividend gets cut, then what value does it have? You can invest in quality companies, get a dividend and get the growth plus that quarterly payout. Yep. And I'm gonna keep beating this drum by all time returns. Starbucks, all time return, 34,450% put in chat. I will invest for the long term to get these gains. Okay. So if you think that was a fluke, Cisco, not the sexiest company of all, 67,000% return all time and it had a point where it drew down a lot but this is what happens when you invest for the long term and you're not choosing sensationalism so remember what i said about pelosi last week in her track record and her husband so pelosi just put a lot of money into google she also got some calls in apple she invested in amazon invested in apple so if you use the site that i talked about last week you can then see what some people are investing in, in the political realm that you can take advantage of for those of you who didn't see the episode please go replay it or for those of you in chat you can put the site in the comments if you like these are the top 10 stocks to stay away from i want you to be careful so ivr macy's apron occidental petroleum groupon Harley Davidson, but let's go look at three in particular. Let's go look at IVR, PK, and DB. So there's a lot of talk about housing. So this is Invesco's mortgage capital, right? So we can see the high was at 24. That was back in 2009. This is, and in 2021 to 182, it is at $3.50. Just looking at this chart, is this chart going up or down? Now, this has some solid movement from 340 to 448. Great. Nothing to write home about. And if you think the mortgage market is going to be big in 2008 and 9, I think you're crazy, to be honest, because people are putting down cash and paying overvalue for homes now. It's a different environment in which we're in. Stay away from this one. I know it got pretty popular, but stay away from it. Parks, Hotels, and Resorts, Inc. Not a horrible company, but once again, the previous high was not within a year. You can see this happened in 2017, 34 bucks, fell down to 399. Now, if you want to swing trade it, great. And you want to get 10 bucks off of it as a trade, okay, maybe. But as a long-term investment, does this chart look to be going up or down? It is to the downside. And also, this is a 200-day moving average. It is to the downside. Stocks that are historically underneath the 200 on a higher time frame are not good companies to invest in. And let's go to DB, Deutsche Bank. You tell me. Some of you hit me, and I, I, I don't know where you got it from, if you got it out of the Discord or whatever group, but Deutsche Bank's high was at 159.76. What advantage does Deutsche Bank have over JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and a finance space, BlackRock, PayPal, Square, almost none. This is not a good one. And if you want to compare it to a good company like Square, you can see to the upside what a good chart will look like. Um, and I saw this on, on Ben's show uh, with Mike, Animal Spirits. Uh, and this is a remarkable stat. 47% of Robinhood users use the product daily. Now, you have to give a lot of credit to the design team and those who built out the wireframing for the UI and the UX that has a lot to do with it, right? And the stickiness of it. But this is a hell of a stat because I know most people that probably use other platforms that are competitors are not on that much. There's a lot to be said about Robinhood. Um, I think the, the ticker of HOD is hilarious, by the way, but they are in an interesting place and, and Ben made the case where they could end up being like the Facebook or 
of this generation for investing. I don't like brokers per se to invest in long term, but depending on what the price is and how it acts over the next, you know, 120 days after it IPOs, it could be interesting. But this stat around usage, I thought was incredibly fascinating. Please put in chat if you are excited for Robin Hood's IPO. Now this, get your pens ready. I've never talked about this before. A couple of you have asked me to go over it, right? And I'm not going to do a full hour breakdown because it takes me an hour and a half to really explain it. But the Benner cycle is really a market predictor. So for those of you that may be doctors or nurses, you've heard this talked about in your field of study. But the Benner cycle, and this, no, this is not the crystal ball, but I do use it in, in uh, association with to understand larger market cycles. So it came out of 1967 and it's one of the few studies that have been accurate after one public. So uh, Benner stated that there are tops every eight, nine, 10 years, starting around 1902. And then the cycle keeps repeating itself. So when people tell you, hey, you can't time the market, you don't know when a crash is going to happen. You don't know when a market is going to pull back. You don't know when a market is going to be soft or flat. That's not true. I'm never going to say this again outside of Dream Team and outside of Stock Club. Every book that you can find on Benner Cycles, go get it. I'll never say it again. I'll never say it again. So let's look at this. And this is for the Dow Jones. This, and ignore the middle lines, but look at the tops. So in 1902, 1910, 1919, 1929, predicted crashes, 37, 46, 56, Let's scroll to more recent times. 1991. What happened in 1991? Please put in chat for those of us that are older and how it affected the stock market. 2010, excuse me, 2000, 2010, 2018. At the bottom, you can also see when the bottoms are, which are ideal times, what I define catastrophic times to buy in the market. So 1933, 1949. 1967. My brother was born in 1987. Go follow my brother's channel, please. Uh, big ass kid, B I G G with two, with two G's, uh, in 1987. What happened in 1987? Please put that in, in the chat. 2003. So it was a little bit off, but there was a soft pullback. And then in 2021, it was predicted for the Dow to then have a downward cycle. It ended up happening in 2020. But this is something that was printed in 67. Just like there are certain innovations and in that Tesla was able to uncover that he was talking about now, or excuse me, that are in, or that are in existence now. There is a rhyme and reason to the market. You should stay away from these middle areas. But if you do look at them, there will be times when the market could be flat for a while or could be a softer market. Let's look at this. So if you look at the bottoms and you compare it to the Schiller index, you can see. Here, this is for another index. You can see the times when we were going to bottom out. 78, 85, 96, 2005. So that was right before the recession. 2012 predicted for something to happen in 23. What could potentially happen in 2023 that could make the market potentially soft or drop? And then the tops of the market, 1927, 1945. 1965, 1981, 1999, right? 2019. So when people are telling you there's no way to know it, I'm like, that is not true. The truth is most people are not reading how to get the under, how to get the information to know if a stock is really undervalued or oversold or if we are in a bubble. The middle lines, you can see these means 2007. 26 would be a mean area, 1980, 1989. When you go study these cycles, you will then know when bottoms and tops can occur. It's called the Benner cycle. Let's look at that one last one. 87, 2003, 2021. So some were saying 2019, some were saying 21, some were saying 23. That is a zone in which you need to prepare. Tops, 2018, 27. And if we bottom out in 23, we may have a four year period. Great. And then we may see some exuberance in 2027 as we did in 2007. And then maybe a flat or softer market around 2029. Trust me, when people are planning for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, 
they're not just looking at a short term horizon. So when you, some of you are like, Hey, this tech boom won't last for a long time. I'm like, you ain't been investing in two years to deserve the right to say that shit. How do as you please, but technology is not going anywhere. And then that's a great quote. When he compared them in an effect sequence of a larger cycle of 18, 20, 16 years, in a small cycle of nine, 10, eight years, these cycles depicted reactions and depressions. According to Benner, this was no chart with no charting. So there was no Robin Hood. He couldn't listen to us. He couldn't listen to Kramer. This is before all this technology existed. And this is why I give people like him and Jesse Livermore credit and Paul Tudor Jones credit because they did it when you had to graph everything out. There was a certain hunger that they had for this information that people don't have to have today. According to Benner, these were cast iron rules and he referred to them as God in prices. This also works for farming. It also works for birthing rate. It also helps to understand when an economy or a country will be in a boom cycle and or a bust cycle. But you don't get this damn information arguing. You get it through reading and learning. Mark Cuban came on here and said, read five hours a day. And he's a fucking billionaire. Put in a time. Stock club members, 100 pages per day requirement, or I want you to go through three books on Audible. Dream team, same thing. The more information you take in, the more of an edge you'll have. And here are my top 10 books that I love on investing. Number one, my Bible, my compass, money, master the game. Number two, Market Wizards, probably the greatest book on investing and trading uh, I think that's ever been compiled. One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, The Four Pillars of Investing, Beating the Street by Peter Lynch, Principles by Ray Dalio, and as a bonus, his Debt Crisis uh, book is absolutely uh, phenomenal. The Big Short. Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. If you ever have traded, Trading in the Zone, I think is the greatest book on marketing psychology, excuse me, on market psychology ever written. Snipers, Dream Team. If you've read Trading in the Zone and it was phenomenal, please put Mark Douglas in ch chat. God rest his soul. Um, Against the Gods, The Snowball, which is a book on Warren Buffett and poor Charlie's Almanac which is his partner and I can argue in some cases is a better investor in some instances than than Warren himself. These are the top five docs on investing. So number one, floored. And I want you guys to watch all of these. Number two, trader uh, that features Paul Tudor Jones in that 1987 Black Monday crash. I want you to go watch that and see what he was doing to then be able to to weather the storm. And if you're not familiar, uh, Paul Tudor Jones is the Michael Jordan of futures trading. Number three, breaking the bank. Number four, the warning. And number five, free economics, the movie. If you are serious about investing, you need to go watch all of these. Next week, I'll talk about some of the things I discussed with Fast Company in regards to my concerns about our economy. But let's look at this. This was what um, the Bush era began. How much debt we were in Obama this is where we were when Trump took over 120 trillion uh, excuse me 20 trillion now we are almost 40 trillion dollars in debt great caption here this only becomes a problem if no one wants the dollar anymore what have I been telling you part of this crypto and international investment thesis is a great way to set up checkmate to then get people off of the dollar but we'll talk about that more next week and how it will greatly affect you. 25 shares per month for five years equals 1,500 shares in your possession. I know some of you feel like, man, I don't have enough money to buy 300, 400 shares. It cut me a break. But I think in a company that is a little bit cheaper, that has growth potential, you can potentially do 25. Second scenario, 100 shares per month for five years equals 6,000 shares right and then for those of you that have more money a thousand shares per month for five years is sixty thousand shares my question to you is how many shares are you going to have in order to be able to get the freedom that you want for yourself
So once again, most things don't matter in investing outside of a long-term perspective. A lot of people would trick you into thinking about things other than that. But holding for the long period is what is going to give you the freedom that you really want. So I want to know what number of shares will you buy every month to get to your freedom goal? Will you do 25 shares a month? Will you do 100? Will you do 1,000? What number are you going to pick that you need to invest in every month to get to where you want to be? Tesla hit this black cross um, or death cross that has appeared and Art was the first person to t tell me about the golden cross and uh, and black cross. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But let me take you to a chart and give you a better setup that I think will help you all. And Stock Club members, I'll put these settings in here for you tomorrow. But let me show you what this actually means with our set. So this teal line is uh, the 72 um, moving average. Down here is a 200. If you look here, you can see as long as this shorter uh, moving average is above here, we are safe. We're safe. What ended up happening with this setup, you were able to see it before on the, if we go back here, we can start to see across here on the 11th of May when this 72 broke down through the 200, it was a signal that Tesla was going underwater. But this is why I always tell you guys to zoom out and look at the longer horizon to get a better understanding on if a stock is truly going up or down. But when you zoom out to a one year weekly chart, you can see Tesla is still the 72 is above the 200. And if we dance down to this area, 550, 43, there's an area in which we can get in. It would have to then break underneath 430, 78 to then start to push on a weekly chart to the downside. Now, let's, let's look on the month. And if we look on a two year month chart, we can see that the 72 is above the 200. So in the short term, it did make a cross. But if you go back and look at the long term perspective, Tesla's fine. Um, there's not a huge breakdown. The stock will be safe. You just have to give it time. And once again, this is the problem with selling too soon. In the 1960s, Warren Buffett spent four million dollars to buy a five percent stake in Disney. He sold that stake for a 50 percent gain. He calls it one of his biggest mistakes because that position today would be worth eight point seven billion dollars. And we've all done it. We've all sold things too early or there's investments that we didn't get in that I want to keep stressing long term will give you freedom that you want for your family. Now, next week, I'll walk you through it. But this is what I want you to pair the 72 moving average with the 200 with the 400. Now, if the 72 and 200 are above the 400, the stock that you're in for long term is safe. But I'll give you a full breakdown of that next week. What's the easiest way to determine stock prediction prices? Simple. Multiply five from the high. Multiply five from the high of top tier stocks. So if the all time high of a stock is 100 bucks, your target would then be 500 bucks. If the stock that you're investing in is 10 and let's say it's new, the multiple on that would be 50. You want to 5x and take that from the high to know where to get out of the market. How do you overcome self, uh, self limiting beliefs? I will go over that more next week, but you need to start with a book called As a Man Thinketh and read it every day for 300 days straight and just read two pages a day and it will help to build the foundation of trust being embedded in yourself. Lastly, I want to walk you through the hidden secrets of investing from an article that I did a few years ago that I think is timeless that you need to know. So I define my style as hyper acceleration or like catastrophic investing. So like last year, those are some of the ideal times. So whether it's on a short term horizon or long term, I like to get in on the edges. So write this down. Rule number one, do not give up more than 1.6% on any trade. I don't care how much you love a company. You don't want to draw down. Now, for long term investing, you have to give it some space. So I'm not recommending that you close out at 1.6% loss. I can do what you can. I don't want you to do that. <clears throat> but this is a game of retention. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make, they make huge losses and then chase to then get back. This is just free game for you guys so you can apply. Number two, do not forget rule number one. Do not lose money. Investing is about mitigating risk at all costs. And once you do that, the money's there. How many of you have ever, and we're talking about this today in Dream Team, how many of us have spent money in the club or on clothes or on, on things to show status when we could have just had the status by investing in great companies? 
Most people treat their portfolio like cash in Vegas and they're just gambling. And I don't want that to happen to you. The number one focus in every single trade, every investment that I make, I'm thinking, what is the potential for this stock or investment or deal to harm me or cause me to lose? I only want to pick the ones that are going to give me safety. Number three, only take trades that will not lose, especially for my swing traders and day traders. You're not going to have a great setup every day. You can't trade every day. For me, I'm fine if I get two to three trades a week because I know the ones that I'm going to take I have a high probability of winning. And I know it's tough to sit to wait for a perfect setup, but it's much better than being down 7, 15, 18, 29, 50%, 60% drawdown. And then if you are looking at it from a competitive landscape, for those of you who may want to go work in the industry and then trade for a firm, the track record that you want to present is one where you don't have many losses and when capital is given to you, you are known to grow it. Being flat on a day beats being negative any single day of the week. Number four, you have to get through the direction right of the market at all costs. If you cannot pull up any stock, ETF, currency, pair, crypto, and you can't tell what the direction is in 30 seconds, you do not know what you're doing. Master that part first. Master that part first. If all the cars on a highway are going north, you want to ride north with the flow of traffic. When you're trying to short a market, and that's when everyone tries to pick tops and say when we're going to fall apart, normally we're only going to draw down 50% anyway, but you're missing out on the upside, the big long pause, all that, right? Uh, you're missing out on 500%, 700%, 1,000, 2,500, because you're miss the, the places in which when you're drawing down the most, and the market is drawing down the most, as shown with binner cycles, right? You should be looking to buy long term to hold those assets any damn way. 11 to 1, snipers, kudos to you. You know this. 11 to 1, asymmetric reward to risk ratio. I want to risk $1 to make 11. Now, if you're able to do that, how many times will you put money in that machine? And then also, once you get up, let's say 10% in an investment, you want to lock in 2% for safety. So, and then I make this analogy, like, let's say you had $500,000 in your house. Locking the door is like you're a stop loss. But what if you had insurance on that money that you only paid $100 a month for that even if the money was stolen, you would then be able to recoup your $500,000 that was in your home. That's not a good investment, but I want you guys to get the analogy. So, Lock in profit to be safe in every single trade that you make. Taking huge risks to make small gains. You don't want to do that. Please screenshot this and write this down. In day trading, you want to risk one to make five. In a mini swing trade, you want to risk one to make 15. In a longer swing trade, you want to risk $1 to make 34. And in your long-term investments, you want to risk one to make 50. This is the matrix. Day trade, I'm saying it once again. You want to risk one to make five. A small swing trade, you want to risk one to make 15. And a long swing, stocks or futures, you want to risk one to make 34. Long term, you want to risk one dollar to then make 50. Stop asking me about plays and flipping. You're going to flip yourself and play yourself to being broke. And some of the hidden secrets, there's no such thing as a bad market, only entries into it. When you guys ask me, hey, well, what you think of the market? The market is good every day. Whether it fell 700 points or went up 700, the market was good. It depends on where you got into it. Number two, yes, the market is rigged, but it's rigged to stay up for long periods of time, especially with quantitative easing. Number three, getting the direction right is more important than anything else. A lot of you get destroyed on getting the direction wrong and be like, well, I thought go with the predominant direction and you'll be fine. Number four, the market can only go from a high to a low or a low to a high. That's it. That's investing 101. That's all you need to know. The market can either go from a low to a high or high to a low. And five, your performance in a market has everything to do with your preparation and what's floating around in your head in the market. That is it. Please write this down. Stop buying in the middle. You want to buy at the edges. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they want to buy in the middle especially in their trades. You want to buy when things are at extreme lows, if they are uh, an incredible company, and you want to refrain from buying when it's at its all-time high.
high. And my last rule for traders especially, never trade without a stop loss. I know people like to have naked positions and there are some advantages to doing so. But in the event of a flash crash, power outage, slippage, market makers stop hunting, right? Things can occur and they'll push other stops down and to break the market. So if you're in at $110 and they push the market down to 93 bucks and then you have $115,000 invested and now you're down 62,000, there's nothing you can do. Once again, my first thought is what can I do to mitigate disaster and eliminate losses out of my life? And this is my seven step blueprint. Number one, buy one share of a company. Number two, buy one share of an index. Step three, laser focus on three power stocks for your long term portfolio. Two tech, two index. Step four, contribute monthly to your long term portfolio. Number five, swing trade for growth twice per week maximum which days should that be on you put it in chat i'm gonna give you a code monday and friday step six micro swing trades for additional income once per week and then step seven help five family members five friends five co-workers and five people in your community execute this plan what's the biggest lesson that you have taken away from this blueprint it's really simple all you have to do is then go execute it What's the difference between VTI and VO? You're splitting hairs at that point, but I'll be able to help you and give a full answer next week. But the percentage difference is not going to be that big, but you need to look and see what the drawdown is going to be. For a stock like Amazon, when it's breaking new highs after consolidation, does it usually keep going? Yes. Amazon slowed down for a while. Uh, Salesforce slowed down for a while. Apple did as well. And then they had tremendous breakouts hold for the long term. But if you want to be able to know um, a, com a, a quick comparison tool that you can look at in 30 seconds to know if one is better than the other, you can use this tool that I'm going to walk you through right. So you can come to ETF database, ETF DB, and you can put in, let's say, VOO versus, let's see, VUG, both Vanguard. You can hit compare and they'll break down to you the difference. So one is a S and P 500. One is a growth. You can see the ex expense ratio, who they're owned by, how much is under management, the volume, et cetera. And these will tell you the comparisons between the two. Now we can look at performance. If we're looking at one week return, if we're looking at three years, so VUG over a three year period returns 97.76, three year return 67% for VOO. And you can see what the dividends are the five day volatility. And then over 200 days, how much less volatile they are in comparison. And I'll say this in closing. I mean, I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help. Even this little screenshot, this you do not have to like me or my perspective on a market, but you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who's better with this crystal ball. If I've helped you make money, please put yes. Ian has made me money in chat. And a great part about once you master long-term investing, you don't need likes, comments, conjecture. Everybody wants to turn everything into a podcast, right? Or, or a reaction take. You don't need that. Some of the stocks I've called over the last couple of years, of course, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, VOO, VUG, v VGT, VTI, Shopify, AMD, Shopify, AMD, NVIDIA, TECL, Pool, Moderna, before most are talking about it. On the next one, I'll tell you the price of where I called it. Short Genius, Short Hertz. The Doge will fall apart when it was the hottest thing on earth. So kudos to Joe for having me on the show. Um, I mean, Deborah got into AMD since 14. Carvana, Disney at 100. Boeing at 91. MGC, uh, Melly, XLK in April of 2020. Shopify at 363. It's now at 14. 93.86. Neo at two dollars and twenty one cent and and twelve bucks is now at forty six bucks. Moderna I called at uh, twenty six dollars and eighty nine cent is now at two hundred and forty one dollars and sixty four cent. In short, Nikola, which is absolute trash. Invest for the long term. You have all the answers here. Next week I'll go over buy boxes and sell areas so you can know a range of where to buy and when to look. It will it'll pull back. And I want to say this in closing, master your craft, choose excellence, invest for the long term. I'm going to say it again, master your craft, choose excellence and invest for the long term. 
stop getting caught up and going back and forth and arguing. And I told you guys, a lot of people are going to try to move you into asset classes that are riskier and then you're going to get your ass destroyed. And the time in which you could have bought some of these great companies, the flip and all the plays that you say you want, you cut a gut from investing in quality fucking companies, but you want to gamble because you haven't been disciplined for the last 10 years, five years to you. For all the he doesn't know people. If you knew, you wouldn't care what I said. Because the people that I know, shout out to my guy, like I don't want to tell his business, but he was on a few weeks ago. To the people that actually made 800, 900,000, 1.23, 2.6 million dollars on Doge, guess what? They say the same thing as me. People stupid as hell to to continue to hold Doge. They should have got out at 55, 60, and 70. Master your craft and your opinion and my opinion and no one else's will matter. Master your craft. Choose excellence and invest for the long term. And the freedom that you want will be there. I love you. There you have it. I keep my promise and all. <laughs> that was me. That was me. That's I like, keep my promise and all. Sometimes in life, you gotta go run that back. <laughs> nah, 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 best of our generation. Let me get my flowers hey, they, now. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> of our generation, play. exclude nobody. Exclude nobody. Crystal ball. Who? Had, I'm actually on chat. Who had better prices? Talk to him. Talk heavy. Yeah. Talk diamond heavy. Dallas page hands. Diamond. I got the diamond. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Talk Yo, heavy. Shout out to the two. They said you put on an N1 mixtape performance with them. Talk heavy. In true hot sauce fashion, bro. That was crazy. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta be appreciative, man. Yeah, that was so amazing. much information. I've For free. It's too, it's too much information. Not too much, like, don't give it away, but too much information for people to process. Like, y'all gotta be able to process. Rewind it the same way y'all do you porn. Stop playing with me. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to hit him excuses. Go, go rewind it. Make that clap. Quit playing with me. Oh. Greatest of our era. Excluding oh. nobody. Yo, I, I was taking spice. notes myself. Heavy man. spice, heavy spice. I, Classic should have went diamond. And for the record, when I did stock club, it was two ninety seven. I don't need nobody money. You need to join. I get the plays away for free. I don't believe in plays, but that's what y'all like to say. That's your goofy long term invest. Hold for thirty years. That's where all the money is. Greatest hey, investor yo. of our era. Humbly. <laughs> I'll give y'all one more time. Who made better calls than I? If I was white, this would be on after Shark Tank. Mark Burnett, call me. I'm going to do my Kanye thing. Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> call me. I am Steve Jobs. Who going to be the Medici family? <laughs> Kanye, that Kanye energy. That energy. That yeah, come on. This is just the market and WWE stuff at the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. So it was the best one we did. If this is the best one I did so far, let me know. Yeah, that was powerful. That was elite, bro. That was elite. I took notes real quick on the M uh MX. I want I want to encourage everybody to trust your work and trust your reader. When you actually do the research, trust it. About a year ago, we were on Market Mondays. I think it was June when we were, we were talking about American Specials now opening up China operations, and it was still a lockdown. So people still using their credit cards. Obviously, we know there's over a billion people in China. And um, I had a call for, I think like Jan maybe January 22 for like $100. And I didn't pull the trigger. And it was one of those things like we always say, look around what you're putting money in. Since I was 18, everybody knows the story I've had at American Express. Shout out to my mom for letting that happen. Damn, you um, got great credit. I had exactly. that first premiere when I was 20. Exactly. Struggle yeah, yeah, yeah. bus. <laughs> I was authorized, authorized using her account. So I was like, look, I'm paying American Express every month. I should invest in it. And I never pulled the trigger on it. So you see it hit at 171 today. You say my, my mic's off. Your mic is off? No, nah, yeah. you, 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 you tripping right there. No, you good. Yeah. Right. yeah, man. To see it at 171, it was like, ah. But that it just goes to show you, like, you're not going to make every play um, that you write down. And, but trust your research. Had I trusted it and actually- Long-term active, investment with mitigated long risk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was elite, man. That was elite. But Thank yeah, you. just trust your research, y'all. That's a that's a valuable lesson. Greatest show on earth. That's a fact. That's no, a fact. we don't just say that just for no reason. I, I can I even do anything? Maybe, he said, maybe you love me when I no longer exist. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> fund of funds. Call me. Hedge they funds. Said, call me. Myself. We need to dame that bag. Shout out to Dame. Yeah. Shout out to Dame. We need that. I need the sound effects going off now. We got to step it sound up. Sound effects. Yeah. Sound effects is coming. We need bag that. drop. We need the sound effects. That's, a, that's very important. Yeah, can we go somewhere really quick? Because I know the people are here, and I got a bunch of text messages about it. I'm sure you did too. Yep. Virgin Galactic. We saw Richard Branson go into space for over an hour, come back. Uh, stock fell 70%. Yep. People are asking, how is it possible? How is this possible? I took two things away from it, and then I'll let you add to it, and I'll let Shadi add as well. Number one, it fell 17%, but if you've been watching over the past three months, it has been up 217%. So let's just put that in perspective. It's up 217 So if you were in Virgin Galactic three months ago, you would have made up upwards of 217%. The other thing is that space travel sounds cool to realize how much it costs, right? They sold the first 600 seats for 250000 250000 what is the percentage of our population that could afford to take a space travel trip for 250000 That's one. Number two is that that is no longer the price to go. So people got to realize that mm -hmm. going forward, they're saying they're trying to get it down to 400000 per seat, right? So that even lowers the level of, of, of people that can have access to it. And in addition, they're selling 500 shares, 500 million, right? 500 million shares. But why are they doing it? They're trying to raise capital so they can offset the cost to actually Expensive. send them up there. So people have to really realize what's going on. I know people are like, wait, oh, this chatter, wait, it, it was a successful trip. Let's buy the stock Monday. Do your research. If no. your research work what it told you. And can they beat the Bezos and Amazon? No, I love Bezos. Well, he beat him up there, but he won't, long-term, that's gonna be tough, right? He beat him up there. I think Jeff, Jeff Bezos is going up there on the 24th and then Elon's still trying to get up there. So he, he beat him in the race they, to go up there. They sold 500 million worth of stock. That's what I'm saying. Said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, to I'll, offset I'll capital it. costs, yeah. Sound is low. Who's that? MG? Mike, uh, MG said that. I'm just saying, if they don't have better pricing or or better to research and capital in comparison to Amazon and what they're doing to SpaceX. I mean, I love Branson, one of the greatest marketers of all time, one right. of the best businessmen in his era, for sure. Um but there are some revenue challenges that they have there. Not, not a huge competitive edge. Uh, second thing, can I do my second thing? I'll maybe do earnings. Disney. And so we've been talking about Disney for a long time. I told everybody I'm getting to that point where I wanted to get in. You threw out the number, I think it was 168. I was like, damn, you ain't just gonna tell them. Uh, but yeah, 168 was an entry point. I'm actually probably thinking of making a new entry point uh, because of what I saw this weekend. It was, it was big. It was a big uh, deal. Uh, obviously, they put out Black Widow in theaters, and it put also put on Disney Plus, and so the numbers came back. And so I think it did eighty million in theaters, it did seventy million international, and it did sixty million on Disney Plus. So you can watch it from your home. So it has an opening weekend of like two hundred and fifteen million. Mm -hmm. That's encouraging because Black Widow is a lesser of the superstars that come out with the Mar Marvel characters. But the fact that that can do two fifty. I see that the, they have a new movie, The Jungle Cruise with The Rock coming out. The movies are coming back. The parks are opening up. It's encouraging. I think JP Morgan actually uh, raised the price. They said uh, potential to go up 20% this year. Yep. 279, so 97 to 18 months. In six years, it'll be at 4484. It's time. I am Martin Luther King. I am Tupac Shakur. <laughs> Just saying. Just, just in case they can't say Just in case they can use it real quick, I'm gonna run through the earnings report. <laughs> Entertainment value, WWE. I guess we'll never know. Are you not entertained? I guess we'll never know. That's not you why not you're here. Are you not entertained? Y'all gonna see me at Goldman and be like, damn, he used to do this shit for free. <laughs> Yo, when are you coming okay. back, man? All right, real quick, oh. earnings point. So it's, right. it's earnings season. Yeah, we, we've been saying that, you know, that's the slogan, earnings season. But it it's our earnings season. So the big banks are reporting this week. So Tuesday, obviously tomorrow, a bank that we have all stamped as the number one bank. Um, JP Morgan Chase will be reporting tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, you got Bank of America, Wells, City, PNC. Uh, BlackRock will be reporting as well as Delta. And then Thursday, my company, I'm glad that you put that graph up about companies and their size, their, their, their worth. Mm -hmm. um, and you look very closely and you said it, but TSM, uh, and we've spoken about this so many times, right? The, the number one uh, semi chip conductor, uh, semiconductor provider in the, in the world. Uh, they're reporting their earnings on Thursday as well. And then 
Well, next week we got some big boys. Obviously, these are big boys, but uh, these are more of the financial sector. Next week we got some tech ones, uh, and uh, we got your polling report next week. So we'll, we'll cover that when we get there. Can can we can we get a couple questions before we? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No, we went over a little long, but. Uh, if if I, they pay for that, I'd pay a big piece. I better enjoy them gyms. <laughs> uh, let's see, Clavon. I hope I said that right, Clavon. I'm just you've been on mute. What's going on? Appreciate it, fellas. How um, you feeling? I'm feeling good. Hey, Ian, you you, you keep coming through. Y'all be dropping sixty every night. It's, it's, Thank it's, you. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, I got a, a one question. Um, and a, a little note for everybody. So Ian mentioned about uh buying a bunch of shares a uh, a year, and one stock I've been buying a lot is SPLG. It pretty much mirrors SPY and the S&P 500. It's like $3 mm -hmm. a share. Mm -hmm. So for all of us with on a budget, you can buy a bunch of those every, every week and you're good. Super uh, gem. Is, Slow down. I want to give you a flowers. That oh, is a super gem. Hey, appreciate that. That's, that's all you That's all you guys are. Just teach us how, how to research stuff. You executed. So I, I yeah. You. Great job. Um, my question is, on the business side, you know, um, how do you guys break down um, – the revenue that you take home for yourself and your in your in your business. Me and my wife are launching a business pretty soon, and we're trying to figure out. You know, no one teaches you how much you, you put in your pocket. You know, so how do you guys come up with that with that formula for your, for your own for yourselves? That's a good question. Yeah, who I'll, go I'll, first? I'll, I'll attack it, and then I'll let everybody else speak. I mean, for I, I mean for us, we didn't really use any set formula. Um, for the first year, we, we didn't take any money. We just put, we reinvested the money because we knew that um, it wasn't time to actually take money. Now, once again, we still don't really have a set formula, but pretty much we have business expenses. Like we have employees, we have to buy equipment, we have to, you know, pay different people, different things. So we make sure that everything is paid first. And then we'll probably keep like, let's say, 15% maybe of whatever's left in the account just to like have it in there and then we'll make distributions of the rest. So that's not really like a scientific answer, um, yeah. but that's what we do. We just make sure that everything is paid first. You always want to keep some money in there just mm -hmm. in case, cause you never know. And then after that, you can pay yourself, um, you know, what's ever left, but we didn't pay ourselves for over a year. And that's extremely important to understand when you go into business, it's not like you're just going to start making money and taking money right away. You got to reinvest mm -hmm. in it. To actually grow the business so you can actually reach a point where you can take money without actually hurting your bottom line. Yeah, if you go back to our track listing of our episodes, the thing is Alex's episode, uh, the title is Stay Down Till You Come Up. And it, granted, it was it fit his title of his episode, but that was something that we were having amongst each other. We we're like, listen, we're not gonna touch anything. Let's just stay down, let's stay down, stay down. Because we knew the long-term vision, right? Invest in yourself, invest in the company first and everything else will come. Ian, what's your-, what's your, what's um, your? I, Well, trial and error. First, I took out too much money. So uh, I got started in 2003 before Gear Richie Dotron came out. So I was in college. I was broke, even though I was wearing Versace and Prada and Gucci and shit. So that's why I'm like, the designer thing is stupid. Then I didn't take out enough. So now I'm at a balance, like having multiple things where that's why the sacrifice and not flexing that showing off is key because I value being able to spend the time with my family, friends, son in the manner in which I want to. Um, starting out, if I can do it all over again, I probably use the 80, 20 formula. The most important thing is a business owner. What business are you in? Well, my wife is a esthetician. So we're trying to start a little, um, we're not a little, I'm talking a little, we're trying to start not a little, uh, yep. yeah, you're right. You're right. A, a skincare line. So it's into like the holistic, you know, um, treating your skin the right way. And it's, it's called, called love my glow. And then I want to get to the, the vending machine business and just, uh, Get that going. We want to get some multiple shifts of income in here outside yeah. outside of my uh, my, my, my full time job. So they, um, keep trying, the job. To figure it all out. Keep the job until the businesses are paying at least four. Well, let's say three times or four times um, what the salary we pay. Because once they, like this is the thing a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about. When you're an entrepreneur, your insurance premiums are crazy. Mm -hmm. Some cases a mortgage, right? I know you and your wife may not want to hear it, but I'm going to tell you, like, please invest half of your gross revenue into long-term investing. Talk to an advisor first. But there's going to be a time in which that customers may not buy 
another brand they may favor more. But the thing that I see with most businesses, they're not able to get over the like that three or five year hump when they could make it. If you're investing into quality companies and man, it's, a lot of it is about time. If you get with a good advisor, they will be able to get you some great gains out of that. And you can add 20%, 30% growth from investing alone. Everyone ignores it and then they end up struggling. I'm telling you, tie your money to businesses that are great, but I will follow 80-20 rule at this point later in my career. Um, I'm investing and reinvesting the majority of my money like back into the market. So, um, but sorry, I wish I did 80-20 and then put a great majority of that money away into the market. And I also, somebody you Somebody on YouTube made a, a good point, and I want to just give a little bit more to that because we actually, it is a little bit more involved than what I said. We started as an LLC. We switched over to an S-Corp, started our account in this business, and we do have payroll. We pay ourselves payroll. Mm -hmm. um, every two weeks, we have payroll, and anything over and above that, that's the distribution. But the payroll is extremely important for taxes yes, yeah. um, and all of the other things that's associated with you know running a business. So. We, that's how we do have the, section, the um, structure set up where you calculate a certain amount of money that you think you're definitely going to make every single month and then you set it up um, on payroll and that mitigates taxes and it's a much more efficient system. And then if you're making more than that, um, then you can always take distribution. So like in our line of work, it's not like we make the same amount of money every single month. It fluctuates. So, you know, if we pay ourselves one thing and we make, you know, three times more than that, and we can always take a distribution at the end of the month, but at the very least, we have some level of taxes that's paid for. Um, so that's extremely important. And you know, we can have, always have accountants come on and give uh, more of an in-depth conversation about that. But yeah, that's where we're at right now. And I want to stress it again. You said something very important. Please don't gloss over that. Make sure that you have all your expenses accounted for before you take a distribution. Mm -hmm. and so that's something that we take very seriously. So I know. Yeah check into it. I can look at the books to see what we're spending. All right, this is what we need to have in the account. Plus, like you said, a 15% overage just in case anything comes up. Um, Emergencies we, always happen. We don't touch anything before yeah. we do that. That's the fact. And what you said is, is, is true in three times, four times multiple. Like yeah. I, I got told you, many people, y'all know the story. If when I was teaching, I calculated how much I was making a month. I said, all right, if I could double that, I can leave. All right, that's not enough. If I can triple it, I'll leave. If I can quadruple it, all right, now I can leave and maybe my wife doesn't have to work. Let's keep going. Um, yeah. So have that plan and, and have a structured system before you, you take a step. But keep going, though. Keep going. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Have a good night, man. Hey, keep Thank teaching. You. Keep learning. Thank, Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I'll tell you about the Super Chat tomorrow. Matt, uh, Robert. I appreciate uh, you. Matt, what up, my guy? Like that. What do you feel? What's your thoughts on stock options? It's a great way to leverage. You just got to be careful. Do your research. We talk about options a lot. Um, 300 practice trades before you go live. Gary <laughs> Ann, what's up? I'm used yourself. You've been unmuted. You all right? I'm good. I'm actually in Hawaii. Oh, Ooh. you live in life. What part? I'm uh, in Oahu. Oahu. Yeah. So, Job well done. Uh, aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Mahalo. Um, Mahalo. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing that shit. Um, <laughs> That's a good problem to have. That's a first world problem. Good problem. Yeah, good problem. I'm not here for work. So it's all good. Um, I had a question for you last Monday. I saw, I found this company called ASML. I just needed a good entry, like what Ian thought was a good entry point for that stock. And the reason I like them is because, you know how we have the semiconductor shortage? Mm -hmm. So they're a Dutch company. And they're literally the only company in the world that makes this product. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's like, it's like it, uh, they're the only ones that make it and you can't make a semiconductor without this. So I looked at their stock price and this last week it was at six, yeah. it was at like 690 something. And today is at like 707. Yep. And then when oh. I looked at the chart, like the last five years, the cheapest has been in like 2016 was like 175. It's been going up ever since. It took a yeah. minor dip during last year, but it wasn't even like anything significant. Um, 66207. And then if it ever falls back to 594.65, those are the two places where it would be amazing. That's great job I to I great job to do the research though. Great yeah, job. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, they actually reporting next week. Um so I'm I'm glad it's, I had that on my list maybe a year and a half ago. 
Um, and I chose to go with TSM instead. Um, but yeah, that's a solid one. Dude, Carrie Ann ain't playing. Carrie Ann can't. And then research done. 1995, it was a dollar and 94 cent. That was a little yeah. 1995. When, when you look at, inside of SMH, it's the third holding. And so like that, that was part of my homework. I was like, all right, let me study all of these companies. And so obviously TSM was number one and NVIDIA was there, Qualcomm and ASLM, ASML was there too. And so I was like, oh, okay. I feel a little bit strong about TSM, so I made that move. But I'm glad that you're bringing it up because somebody's listening right now, they're going to pay attention and they're going to lock in and do the research on it as well. So, And you gave them a, a dope fact, right? They can't make the semiconductors without having it. Yeah, and the only company that makes it. So even though like China and Russia were trying to make this, a similar uh, 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 machine, it's going to take them 20 years to do it because that machine took about 30 years of development to get to where it's at now. So they can't even, you can't even replicate it as much as they would like to. Yeah. Yeah, nah, you're on point. That's the great thing about a community. Yeah, please uh, write that one down. That, that one... That's the great thing about a community. Um, I'm sure Thank you know, you, Gary. Red Panda, Ohio University, um, you have these communities where it's not just about the teachers. We can't leave our trappers. No, trappers anonymous for sure. Yeah. It's not, um, you're only as good, uh, institution is only as good as the students. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, you have communities and people, you know, are teaching each other, working with each other and learning and sharing information and sharing plays. And that's, that's really a, a beautiful thing about coming together and congregating um, in unison. So let's take one more question if you can, let's see before, we, before we wrap this. Tucha, we're coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. Did I get that right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fridge emoji. Fridge emoji. Uh, we're gonna find somebody. I am the algorithm. I am Jim Simons. I am Renaissance. I love y'all. <laughs> Shout out to Kanye, man. Kanye hasn't had a rant since that money got super right. Kanye showed up in Paris with the mask on. William, mm -hmm. what's going on? You've you been unmuted. What's the deal? Hey, what's going on, man? Long time. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I actually put this in the, uh, I joined Red, Red Panda. I put this in the uh, question telegram, but I have VOO and SP. I don't have a lot of shares per ETF, but um, I have a traditional IRA and I wanted to tie one of those to it. Should I, it's just in cash right now. So I don't have it, you know, I didn't invest in anything. So you think I should, I want to keep VOO, but do you think I should like sell it? and then rebuy it and put it in that traditional IRA? Mm -mm. I'll give you more detail on the call tonight, but no. Um, what, what price did you get? That's a good question. Um, or or it, what month? And I can extrapolate I got with the January of 2021. You got in, hell, don't sell that. Okay. Yeah, if you got it in January, you probably got around 348. It it's at 401.82 now. Yeah, it went up. It went up. So I just yeah. didn't. Yeah, I don't know if I should like uh, invest in the Dow. Like put that account. That Dow is great too, but I mean, you you would be trading LeBron for Durant. Like you're splitting hairs at this point. Now, ideally, if you can get Durant, LeBron, Steph, Dame all on one team, great. But it's not as if the Dow is at such a low price where the return dispersion is so wide where like you'll be missing out like no because i mean by end of year well let's say by end of next year we should hit 452.55 on vo don't sell that you'll you'll what, slap me in public if you see me if you what about what about spy should i sell should i get rid of that and like buy more microsoft if you want safety no if you want growth yes but you are in a great position because you have a lamborghini and a ferrari if you had a Lambo and a Ferrari and you could afford both of them, would you get rid of either? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well I you, got you in a good space. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank appreciate you. you. Appreciate you. Market Mondays. The best. Hey, yo, you know, this is crazy. So I was reading, me and maybe you saw this, uh, CNBC, they had the debate. Uh, it's an article about GM or Ford. 
And I was like, flashback. Recently, like, they did this? Literally, it's in today. Yeah. And um, they, they, they said they took GM. Uh, I was like, wait, what if I heard this before? <laughs> like, wait, didn't we just you see that crystal out? ball glowing behind me? <laughs> like, Speaking of which, GM, if it gets down to 43, 34, would be a good area to long term invest. Um, and then if we ever drop down to 35, 58 again, that, that, that'd be a good price. But yeah, I saw that. But, you know, I mean, it's yeah. only so many car companies you, we're going to take a positive approach. I got some sleep, so, you know, I'm feeling silly. Um, we're going to take a positive approach on all things. And then, you know, if, if other media companies have used certain things, so be it. I'm sure we'll be on there one day. Kudos to Mary, Bonowin, Josh, everybody at CNBC. Uh, Mark Burnett, call us though, because we should be on after Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah you have it. Um, and definitely I am Peter know. Lynch. Yeah. Peace to the God. A legend, a legend, a legend in his time. Um, you know, a, a, a great, great mind in the, in the world of business and investing, articulates information um, at extremely high levels and something that you should not take for granted. And um, what you should also not forget is that, um, you know, it wasn't uh, any other outlet that um, had the opportunity, except for your leisure, um, protect, it, protect the bros. <laughs> protect <laughs> protect the bros. us at all costs. No, nah, protect the bros, man. Right. At some point, you have to realize the value, the value in it. Unless y'all want to see blast come out again. It's never been done. I'm not sure if y'all want to see Never been it. done in history. Never been done in history. It has not been duplicated since. It's not easy. Two and a half years um, to build a platform where you put out daily content every single day on everything from real estate to crypto to stocks with six shows. With It, it takes a lot of time. Every Monday, locked in for two hours mm -hmm. at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what. You know, it's a certain, it's a certain level that, you know, <sighs> Protect the bros, man. Protect the bros. Protect the bros. Gabrielle, I'm not uh, acting interesting. I'm just putting on, you know, I'm trying to make it a little bit entertaining because, you know, last year it was like, it was stiff because y'all didn't know me. So you're like, yeah, this motherfucker probably a scam artist. I'm like, no, I'm going to give you this five for free. Now I'm just showing a little bit of personality, throwing a little bit of WWE on it, right? To add some entertainment value. Uh, so for those who are Hollywood watching, I appreciate y'all. Yeah. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm okay, good. Please, 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 please tell a friend, tell a friend. Market Mondays is a podcast. So if you missed this, it's climbing up the play, charts, it's climbing up the charts, running back. Look, look, oh, oh, well, we're going to wrap up here. Well, we're going to do five scholarships. So if you guys want a scholarship, put scholarship in chat. Listen, uh, get us to uh, number uh, one uh, so I can give out a thousand. But I don't want y'all in two years like, yo, he changed. And now he was hove and well, the, he had Goldman. He don't remember us. Yo, <laughs> get us to number one. Yeah, let's run it up. Let's run it up. Let's have, I mean, we got to do it. We got to do it. 500. Shout out to Sleepers. Uh, oh, shout out to Social Proof Podcast. Shout out to Ransom Gems with our brother, MG the Morris guy, Keanu Watson. Shout out to Inside the Vault, my brother, Ash Cash. Shout out to uh, Casanova Brooks and yeah. Free Nation. And shout out to Inner Wealth, man, my man, Dave. Yeah, I really Absolutely. like that. Yeah. Inner Wealth, they, they Dave. Got it. Dave, Dave special, man. You guys are missing yeah. out. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not watching Please tune Wealth, in. And, and you put it on a perfect day to tune in. Yeah, yeah. On yeah, it's on Sunday. Yeah, you're not yeah. doing nothing on Sunday, man. Check it out. Yeah. It's it's a good change of the mix from just business talk. Oh, Gabriel, um, in a good way. But I keep, Queen, I wasn't coming at you sideways. I we got to kind of figure out because how they gonna get the scholarship though? Wait, you gotta maybe put the emails in. Yeah, oh, put, put yeah. the emails in, and then, wow. then then maybe somebody can I, screenshot and we'll pick five. All right, so yeah. here's what we'll do because the scholarship we can't really we don't know who you are. At the end, at the very end, we're gonna ask for emails. Put your emails in. Do not put your emails in now. If you put your emails in now, you will be immediately disqualified from receiving the scholarship. Immediately. Yo, is the Jansel watching? Shout out, um, shout out to Jan. Shout, shout out to the Queen. Queen, help me because I'm not going to screenshot. I'm going to be real with you. Yeah, you and I'm you drinking know. coconut juice for those of you guys. Uh, this Thursday, we will have the Bronx looking like Big Pun is back. Big, yes, pun, Big pun will be back. That's, that's the vibe. I told Jimmy. Jimmy was a little concerned. You know, he's old school. He's like, you know, it's just a flyer. I said, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Out of a last. I said, you know, you got to go. It's, it's not big enough. And no, you got to relax. I said, Jimmy, Jimmy, trust me. Trust me. He, yeah, he gave us Is that. there a certain amount of people? Because people have been texting me now, like, how many can come, et cetera? Or are you going to announce it 
Wednesday. If you are, if you RSV, the RSVP will probably end at midnight. So okay. if you RSVP, you will have somebody say it'll come. If you RSVP, you will be allowed in. But please RSVP. Please do. This you might not ever see anything like this ever again. Yeah, it's a vibe. I'm gonna be honest. It's a vibe. We tested it out just to make sure it's a vibe. No, and we got our bro, shout to Sus One. Sus One. The town. He's a whole legend. Yeah, we'll be yeah, DJing. Yeah. The legendary Sus One will be. We, we La Marina is back. Yeah, we was in class together, man. Shout out to Sus. He was DJing, yeah. coming yeah. to class for week. I'm like, yo, bro, what you doing all night? Like, y'all gonna bring out Don Cartagena? What y'all doing? I know y'all got some special plan, boy. We got, oh man, La Marina is back. La Marina Can't is wait. back. And then Friday, we're going to catch some vibes Friday. It's going to be a good weekend. Good weekend in New York. Um, I'm looking forward to it. We are number one Where? in Jamaica. Yeah. That is yeah. You understand the Put the flags in the chat. Yeah. You understand the importance of that very soon. Um, <laughs> Everything top secret. Yeah, man. Jamaica, that's, that's, I mean, that's home. Everybody know that's home for me and my family. Um, so being there, number one, being number one there in business, two categories. We're number one in business and we're number one in investing. Shout, so out, to shout out to all my people in the yard. Shout out to DJ Just Risk will be in the building also. Oh, yeah, that's our home DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's in-house. The EYL DJ. Yes, sir. And also, um, the chain remains, the game is intact. The good news is that Earn Your Leisure is at an all-time high, number two on the charts. Well, not all-time high, but number two on the charts. Yeah, we got the number one person here. Number one on 19 mm-hmm. countries across the globe. Uh, moving at an unstoppable pace, and we are about to announce something <laughs> that will change the environment. The world. We are, we are about yeah. to change the environment. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Big. Much. Yeah. This is big. Quite possibly the biggest thing that we've ever done. Hey, Ian, I had a conversation. Remember that person I was telling you that, that wanted to be a guest on Market Monday? I told him the idea. He said, man, I'm pissed off that I didn't think of this. So yeah. I can't wait for the world. When he oh. come on, <laughs> I'm starting yeah. my research now. I'm gonna get um, oh, oh, Ian Winfrey, Ian Smiley. Yo, I can't wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be, That's it's special. Gonna be, gonna be a good time, man. Shout out to, shout out to Shade. Yeah, we just survived. You know what? <laughs> snow up there. So I said, my man, talk to pops. Talk to pops had a, a Sade throwback. And so shout out to talk to pops. Talk to pops. And uh, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I've showed Sade any love. So I wanted to put it up there. Obviously, you know, snow's on the other side. And, I will, mm-hmm. Second album came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came um, out last yeah. week. I'm listening to it. You still campaigning? Um, Somebody gotta get elected, right? <laughs> True. Gotta get elected. You know what I mean? Eventually you gotta get elected. <laughs> I show them the versatility. You know what I mean? Some some days you gotta come up like aggressive with it. And some days it's like, you know what? You gotta just chill. Let it come to you. Yeah, we got shot at Make what you too. want, want you. <laughs> Go. Yep. <laughs> invest in people who are invested in you. That's a fact. That is a yeah. fact. They, they're still putting scholarships. All right. At this point, please put your emails. We will pick three people from Zoom, two people from YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to try to Five scholarships. Out. Put your emails in the... Uh, do they need to put their names also? Or just, email? I'm gonna just, just do email. Just email. Yeah, put just your email, email in. Put your email in the chat. That was me taking a picture of, uh, of somebody's email. Yeah. Gotcha. You guys like yeah. the video so we can do more like it. If you guys, you guys enjoyed tonight's episode, please put 128 in chat. Y'all put in, in the chat too how many points I dropped tonight. I'll never yeah, talk about that Benna cycle again. Stock Club, I'm going to have something special for y'all for the rest Not of the ever year. Ever again. Ever again. Never yeah. again. Oh, I'm please cool. like this. Please like it. I wrote, I wrote it in my notes, Ian. Never again. <laughs> I'm cool. Folks, we want to thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate y'all dearly. We want you to take this information, but more importantly, we want you to execute the information. We love you dearly. We want you to have safe travels. I want you to be safe this summer. And if you're coming out Thursday night, just show some love. Everybody come in good spirits. Everybody gonna leave in good spirits. You know what we're about. We come in peace, we leave in peace. We just here to have a good time. We want our city to be back and have a good time. We want to show that it's possible just to have a good time. Nothing else. And, and if you if you got a question about anything, watch the beginning of the video. We addressed all issues, 
every that's single not, issue. Nothing to, to be addressed. It was addressed at the beginning of the video, and we will never speak on it ever again in life. Blessings. Blessings, y'all. Love is love. Be safe. Y'all have an amazing one. Appreciate y'all dearly. Over and out. I am Tupac Shakur. I am Rashad Below. I am Troy Millens. I'm bringing my Troy Joy. Game, set, match. Love y'all.